Okay, we got Mike on. Great. Welcome, everybody. It's good to have you here. Please come on in, have a seat. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, we're going to uh, go ahead and get started and start our meeting. Sorry, we're just a minute late here. And we'll go ahead and start our meeting, uh, open 531. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm going to say some of the similar things that we say at all our meetings, some similar things that we've said at the last couple meetings. Uh, it's good to see everyone here. It's good to see everyone who cares about children to be here. Um, I'm assuming that everyone that's here cares about our school and cares about the children. So thank you for caring and trying to help in your way. Um, as board president, uh, it's my responsibility to chair this meeting and conduct it with order and civility. This meeting should be very simple. Uh, we should have no cheers, no jeers. That means no clapping, no shouting, no booing. If there is any disruption of any kind, it makes it tough for us to hear the people that are speaking. It also is disruptive to the people sitting next to you and uh, disruptive to people that maybe have a difference of opinion. So please. Keep those to yourself. We're going to have a civil conversation. As uh, uh, former Democrat Governor James McGreevy said, we are losing sight of civility in government and politics. Debate and dialogue is taking a back seat to the politics of destruction and anger and control. Dogma has replaced thoughtful discussion between people of differing views. Each of us as another author said, each of us should do whatever we can in our spheres of influence to preserve the dignity and respect of every person. In reality, human dignity presupposes respect for our differences. Step toward building bridges of understanding rather than creating walls of prejudice and segregation among us. I always tell people that they're welcome to come to these meetings. Please keep caring. Please keep coming and please share your feelings and thoughts with us respectfully. Some of us board members are continuing to receive uh, threats, credible threats, um, by email and other means. We will not stand for that. If there is anything threatening in this meeting, you will be removed from this uh, room and we will proceed. Outside organizations are threatening board members and injecting their partisan politics and influence in our local governance. This is not okay. We are here to focus on the education of the kids. We've had wild allegations from people jumping in from the sidelines to be legal experts. I appreciate uh, the board's legal counsel, uh, Mr. Bob Turk, for being here. Thank you. Um, and some people are telling me that they're not going to be here tonight because of the bullying and the lack of inclusion and kindness. Please keep it open, civil, kind of discourse. I will try to do my best as my role as board president to chair this meeting and conduct it with order and civility. And I want to let you all know, I do fully support the school's goal to provide a safe, inclusive environment to all students, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, disability, nationality, sexual orientation, or gender. Some people have arranged spectacles at our school. This is not helping our students. It's not helping our education. It's distracting from our goal of excellent education. We want to be involved, open, calm, patient, caring members of the community. Uh, remember that anger is never the answer. Fear is not the way. Violence and aggression are not okay. Schools for the kids, it's not to be politicized. <clears throat> we are here to conduct our business without pride or prejudice, without fear or favor or partisanship. We need to work together to get things accomplished. This country was set up constitutionally to be an argument, and that is fine as long as the argument leads to a result. We are not here to have small arguments that inflame and divide. Thank you for being here. Before we get started, I would like to say that the board appreciates and supports stakeholder input at our meetings. 
Engagement by members of the public in civic matters is a cornerstone of our democracy. Everyone should have a chance to express their opinions with the guidelines the board has established for its meetings so that we are able to conduct the meeting effectively and efficiently. During the meeting, there will be a time for public to comment on matters not on the agenda. In addition, members of the public may comment on specific agenda items after I, as board chair, ask for public comment on an item. Until it is your turn to speak, or if you are just uh, here just to observe the meeting, please refrain from any behavior, cheering, jeering, or anything else that prevents others from participating in the meeting or that disrupts the board's ability to conduct business of the board. This includes any conduct that prevents members of the board, district staff, or person making co public comments from speaking. We also ask that when you are called upon, you address the board. While we assume that members of the public intend to participate in the meeting in a civil manner, with, while legitimate criticism of the board is protected speech, we will not tolerate any threats of violence made to board members, staff, or to other members of the public. In the event of threat of violence, the individual will be removed from the room. Whenever possible, we will be and they will be referred to law enforcement. In the event that the meeting is disrupted in a manner that prevents the board from proceeding with the agenda items for the meeting, we may choose to, uh, please silence your phones, thank you. We may choose to recess the meeting until order is restored. If order cannot be restored after, uh, we may choose to clear the room, move the meeting to a different location where it will no longer be disrupted or adjourn the meeting. <clears throat> so, this is the uh, part we read at all of our meetings. The governing board encourages public discussion. Anyone wishing to address the board may submit a comment card like these from the back prior to the start of the agenda item discussion. Comment forms will not be accepted for any items once the item has been announced. A person wishing to address the board shall first recognize, be recognized by the president and shall then proceed to comment as briefly as the subject permits. As always, there is a three-minute maximum speaking time per person on a single agenda, agenda item. As always, the limit on discussing each item is 20 minutes. Board Bylaw 9323 states the board cannot comment on a non-agenda item. However, the matter may be placed on the agenda of a subsequent meeting for action or discussion by the board for the Brown Act. Please be advised our board meeting is being recorded. <clears throat> Are there any public comments on the closed session items? Sorry, one moment, let me check to see if we've got any. Uh, as we have none, we'll go ahead and uh, go to closed session. Okay. Can I have all of them? Yes. Thank you. Is this the only one you found in there? Uh, yeah. Possibly? Okay, sorry, one moment. Uh, yes, we got another one here. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, we'll go ahead and call up Amber McKnight. That's our first one. And uh, you can go ahead and start the time. Is Amber McKnight here to speak? On the closed session items. Okay. Then we'll go ahead to the next person, uh, Debbie Ferrari. I'll wave mine. You'll wave yours? Okay. All right. And if there's no others, then we'll go ahead and go to closed session. Thank you. Okay, go for it. Uh, I hereby notify the board that I shall not attend a closed session in part to protect my right and duty to stand up and speak out publicly on matters before the school board and for the following specific reasons. I believe that there is a risk that the conservative members of the board in closed session shall engage in discussion of matters that are not agendized, such as discussions of the council related to non agendized matters, and as a result, shall put the attendees, all of them, of the closed session at risk of violating the Brown Act. As I have warned publicly already, I believe that conservative members of the board may use the cover and secrecy of the closed session to target for retaliation to steal the superintendent principal, including beginning a process for removing her from her role despite her widespread and well known excellence as an educator and superintendent, her long standing dedication to the students and parents of Snow Flint, and her willingness to stand up for what is right, no matter the proponent of the wrong, whether a parent, community member, or most importantly, a member of the board itself. 
Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, did you have any comments? Okay. And I assume you were directing the conservative board members to Linda and myself? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and close the uh, session and we'll return uh, a little after six o'clock.
by the uh, no, 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 no. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, open our session again at uh, 6 17. Uh, welcome back to the uh, open session of the Sonoma Unified School District Board Meeting. Uh, we'll begin by the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, just a quick recap. Um, we didn't want to uh, keep it quiet and respectful. Um, we will go ahead and uh, read the uh, public comment information here. The governing board encourages public discussion of all agenda uh, items on the agenda. Anyone wishing to address the board may submit a comment form prior to the start of the agenda item discussion. Comment forms will not be accepted for any items once the item has been announced. A person wishing to address the board shall first be recognized by the president and shall then proceed to comment as briefly as the subject permits. As always, there's a three minute maximum speaking time per person on a single agenda item. The limit on discussing, as always, each item is 20 minutes. Board bylaw 9323 states the board cannot comment on a non-agenda item. However, the matter may be placed on the agenda of a subsequent meeting for action or discussion by the board per the Brown Act. Uh, please be advised our board meeting is recorded. And again, by way of uh, clarification, there is no cheering, no jeering, no clapping, no shouting, no booing. If that is happening, there will be a simple warning. If it continues, you will be uh, requested to leave the room. If that's not happening, the uh, deputies will help to make that happen. So let's please keep things civil. <clears throat> we'll move on to uh, action on closed session report out. There's nothing to report out on closed session. Item five, approval of the agenda. We have one public comment. Um, would you like to make any comments to the board prior to that? Public comment afterwards. I want to um, take one word out of a number of the D. Please take an alternate. I did not put that in my request. And other than that, I'll just go for the agenda. Okay, as far as I understand from the administration of the school, item 8D, discussion for the addition of alternate members of the Bond Oversight Committee was submitted by you to the administration. Originally, right? and I did not include alternate. It was okay. to be full fledged at large number. Okay, so your uh, request to address the agenda of removing the word alternate. Okay, noted. And we'll hear public comments and then uh, Trustee Romo prior to uh, any action on the agenda. So public comment, uh, Chris Boberts. Thank you. Thank you. All right, my name is Chris Boberts. I uh, live in Seoul and I am a parent of uh, and Kid. Uh, let me try to make a quick video of the panel. Uh, first, I would like to address the grouping of resolutions under item 8B, of which Trustee Jurgensen has submitted to the agenda in this format. Per bylaw 9322, in order to quote, in order to promote efficient meetings, the board may bundle a number of items and act upon them together by a single vote through the use of a consent agenda. Consent items shall be items of a routine nature and items for which board discussion is not anticipated and for which the superintendent recommends approval. The three resolutions, end quote, the three resolutions are not only different from each other in nature, but can po not possibly be actioned by a single vote. I believe that each one of these resolutions deserves individual discussion and consideration. Therefore, I'm requesting that agenda be amended and the three resolutions be split into separate agenda items. Second, I would like to address item 18, discussion of additional strength members of the uh, Bond Oversight Committee uh, submitted to the agenda by Trustee Hurley. First, I think 
thank you for the manner of uh, in which this was submitted for discussion only. However, as of the 912 board meeting, there was discussion and resolution to approve of uh, there was discussion and resolution to approve of which there was a motion to adopt and subsequently died without second. I believe this is to be irrelevant at this point as the agenda item currently states and would like to request to be removed from the agenda. Third, in regards to item agenda, uh, in, in regards to agenda item 11, uh, future agenda items placed on the agenda by trustee Jurgensen. For bylaw 9322, any board member of or any board member or member of the public may request that a matter within the jurisdiction of the board be placed on the agenda of a regular meeting. The request shall be submitted in writing to the superintendent or designee with supporting documents and information, if any, at least one week before the scheduled meeting date. Items submitted less than one week before the scheduled meeting date may be postponed to a later meeting in order to allow sufficient time for consideration and research of the issue. To summarize, Anyone here is free to submit an item to the agenda. There is also a long-standing agenda item seven uh, community uh, for seven community uh, comments from the community, of which members of the public are able to bring forward concerns to be addressed. In my research, neighboring school districts do not include such an agenda item, and this has not been the precedent set by Sonoma Unified. Therefore, I'm urging the removal of item eleven future agenda items. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rowan? So I will uh, agree with that, the comment from the public. I think that we should move to split agenda item uh, 8B into three separate enumerated agenda items in order that each matter uh, be presented and discussion can be held uh, for 20 minutes at least in accordance with bylaw 9323. Uh, I have to agree that uh, the comment about two agenda items makes a lot of sense, uh, and is, uh, ultimately it's not necessary to have future agenda items on this agenda, since it's something that any member of the public or the board uh, can present future agenda items within a week of the board being tried to strike that as well. You would strike eight B or yeah, strike move them to be very separate and split. Eight, uh, eight B into three separate enumerated agenda items, and I would strike future agenda items number eleven. Okay. And I would move to to that. Okay. So eight B, make them three different items. We could move them possibly to eight F and G. Would that is that kind of what you're thinking? You could do eight B just. Split out as B one hundred thirty two, eighty three, and each board uh, provide them each with twenty minutes. Uh, that's comment. that's fine with me. <laughs> um, any comments you have on that? Yeah. Okay, I second that. We can have eight B. We'll call them eight B nine, ten, and eleven, since that's what they're called on the designation. And did you have a motion for yours for eight D? If you did, I missed it. I'm sorry. If I may, President, you do have a motion pending that you seconded oh, before sorry. another motion. I seconded. We'll uh, go ahead and take a vote on splitting out 8B. Thank you, uh, Council. Um, all in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. And for 8D, uh, discussion of the addition of members for the Bond Oversight Committee. Well, it's not the same as it was last time. It is not redundant. It was. Somebody put in a word alternate that was not intentionally <clears throat> supposed to be there. It, and from the onset, the members of the community that have collected petitions to add members to the bond oversight committee wanted full-fledged people so that we have more representation, a better representation of the people of Sinol. And so that is why we have asked for full-fledged members, not somebody who is an alternate that sits on the bench in case somebody doesn't show up. So it's a well, we'll, dis we'll discuss that at that time. And we want it so, also with action. And is there a motion? Uh, is there a motion to change that on the date? I made that with the agenda okay. request. I, so I second your motion. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, vote uh, the moving word alternate. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Eight uh, D is changed. Okay. I move that with the agenda 
as noted, that we accept the agenda in all favor. Or, sorry, yeah. any motion that we approve it. Do I have a second? Are we not? All right. We're not taking on 11. Did you make a motion for that? I can make a motion for that. I make a motion to renew. Uh, just as a way of clarification, that was added on by Superintendent Barnes as a way to handle some future agenda requests. Uh, I believe originally it was in, uh, some community members. Uh, I, I won't name names, but um, yeah. I can't speak for her whether that's true or not. Yeah. But I, could, uh, I think that the point is to remove it. I move to that. Uh, is there a second? Five minutes, second. We'll move on. Uh, go back to my motion to approve the agenda as it stands. Do I have a second? All, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, any opposed? Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, item six board and staff reports and communication. Uh, let me pull up my information. I apologize. Some of this will be uh, a little bit funky as. Our normal procedure is to have our superintendent present on a fair number of these. And uh, we regret that she is not able to make it. She is out on medical leave, so we hope she is doing well. Um, Ms. Mickey, do you know if someone is planning on presenting on any of these? Yeah, but Mr. Hoxie. For the enrollment? Enrollment, no. Okay. Uh, so the uh, enrollment is currently standing uh, as of Friday at 269. Uh, the enrollment report, as far as I understand, is business as usual with classes teaching, great, excellent uh, education happening in our school. Uh, any other comments on enrollment report before we go to a public comment on enrollment report? Okay, uh, Amber McKnight. Hello, my name is Amber McKnight. Uh, I am um, here to speak on our enrollment report because while our enrollment isn't that fantastic, what is not included is that our enrollment is actually down. Um, originally, back in, I think it was May or June, I spoke about how uh, I have been bringing in more families. In fact, two joined, no, three joined this fall. I'm sorry, I have a little bit more. Um, four, nope, there's preschoolers, sorry. Um, of those, one has left, one left at the end of last year. The independent kindergartners who were going to join me next year, of, of which there were six in addition to my own, have let me know that they are no longer comfortable, not because of the divisiveness when you think of, oh, they just want, they, they don't like the flags, or they want pride flags. They don't want to come because this is ridiculous. They don't want to come because this isn't fun. They don't want to come because our community is damaged beyond repair. At this point, we don't think there's actually a community to save, it's a community to fix. And as such, as someone who, if you are really professional, you all know about us, she has something she would like to say because she came to me last night with one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever heard. What would you like to say, Alice? Two of my friends have left this school. Please don't say any names, okay? Very important to protect your friends. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I miss them very much, and they're not going to come back if this isn't fixed. Sure. What else would you want to tell about coming back in the game, which was the biggest one? I don't feel comfortable staying at this school, and I am actually considering maybe leaving this school. For the record, anyone that's unaware, Alice put together that Ice Cream Wednesday fundraiser by herself. She used the money that she saved from tooth fairies, from recycling, asking people and neighbors because she wanted to share the joy and the traditions that first graders get when they're here the whole time. You guys think this is about flags or religion? It's not. It's about our kids and our community. And we are letting people come in here and treat this and treat us like we're not people, like we aren't kids, parents. And it's awful. And the fact that I can look out here and I can see maybe a handful of other parents I know and a handful of people I see in the community, lets me know this isn't changing, that we're doubling down on this. It needs to be repaired. 
Kintsugi is the Japanese art of repair where you highlight our differences because that's what makes us stronger. You talk about the flag, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, 6B superintendent's report. I understand uh, there is no superintendent's report today. Uh, 6C facilities maintenance report. Mr. Hoxie. Oh, I don't have a whole lot to report this month. It's been a semi quiet month. Of course, I wasn't here for a whole week. Anyway, um, just doing a lot of maintenance and stuff. Um, we did have a busted irrigation line to it. I for a while before it finally came across, we got it fixed. Um, been working on sprinklers for the last week, just trying to fix that. We fixed one, really did it under on the sprinkler system. Um, as I said before, I go from weeds to leaves, and now I'm done with weeds, and we're going into the leaf season, so now I'm busy all next few months just picking leaves up. Uh, something in the past meeting I forgot to uh, recognize the public services they did a, when they did their donation. Um, they gave a discount on the bed fees for the flood damage, so I just wanted to recognize that. Yeah, that's a 90 we're going to have to yeah. that as well. Yeah, that's so, right. That's it. Um, that's pretty much it. Just the usual. Thank you, Mr. Hawks. Appreciate it. Uh, technology report 6B. Hi, I would like to report to the board that um, we've been working on tickets since the last time we uh, all met, uh, supporting classroom operations as well as the teachers and students, as always. I would like to add to the enrollment report, and this is kind of um, uh, mechanics of the finances of school districts. We passed a date, October 4th, um, which is called Census Day. That date is the day that we capture, um, well, we work off the, the, date, the, the demographics of and the enrollment numbers of the school districts. So, um, the number that you see uh, before you will end up uh, pushing forward uh, different functions within the school board, that, uh, school business that includes uh, finances and so on and so forth. So we're heading into what we uh, all this data is then reported up to CalPATS and then um, reports get generated out and the state uses that to um, for different various purposes. Um, but besides that, uh, we have been working on uh, new kind of operations within the IT team, including um, increasing cyber hygiene, keeping up to date with the cybersecurity, um, updating our servers in a very, um, I guess, uh, formal process. So we um, are working on that and implementing it and adjusting as accordingly. And but besides that, um, we are. Um, um, but besides that, I did hear the feedback for, about the quality of the board, uh, the board streaming that is currently happening right now. I've heard, and uh, with that, I am uh, I am going to explore uh, different ways to increase the quality of our stream so that people can hear us uh, virtually as well as in here. So I'll explore various routes, uh, maybe purchasing extra equipment or working with our um, our agency partners, um, um, government partners. Uh, to see if we can improve that process as well. And that is all I have to report for October. One comment on that is some people were mentioning that what we see on this screen on the broadcast was huge, yeah. and the scene of the meeting was very small. Yeah, so, yeah. And I'm hoping that uh, currently we are utilizing Google Meets for our streaming purposes. What I'm hoping is uh, I'm planning to take a look at Zoom and team meets, uh, which is a Microsoft application, and see if we can uh, remedy that um, issue. Okay. Yes. Does Thank Simly you. Organic play any role in your uh, recordings? So, no, it doesn't. So the way that the, the recordings work is we use Google Meets, which is uh, what our primary uh, video meeting um, program is. And then we uh, stream it directly to YouTube. Um, and from that process, usually 
the after we're done with this session, it will immediately be posted with pretty much no editing. Uh, it doesn't happen. So Google Meets would be the place where these meeting recordings are stored? Uh, Google Meets would be, it depends on the, well, I guess this school year, yes. Uh, during COVID, we did use Zoom, and during that time, um, we didn't really have, well, during that time, there was, we, we did stream via Zoom pretty much. So we could go somehow to Google Meets and get the original? Uh, it, de it depends on um, it, in what regard to, like, uh, I guess. Is, well, we're finding that some pieces, and I'm going to get to that in a different mm -hmm. item, but some some of our board meetings have been altered. And okay. so I'm asking where the original are stored. Uh, pretty much whatever, uh, when we were given the directive to start streaming, none of the uh, videos were edited. It's just posted right away to uh, YouTube. And that's what you see on the playlist. So once we got the directive from uh, the board president um, and um, Superintendent Barnes, uh, we, I do not touch the recordings. That's, that's been for a couple of years, correct? Uh, it has been, to my recollection, I, I cannot say for certain right now, but uh, for certain, I can say that once we received the directive from this board, we made sure to uh, stream it to YouTube and make sure that it's just posted directly so that our viewers at home could see it right away. There are some alterations on things that have been taken this year. And I know what took place during the time mm -hmm. that there something has been changed. And uh, uh, Trustee Hurley, I would uh, love to uh, hear we'll talk where about it. Yeah, of course. Great. And that is my report. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, 6E, Community Club Reports. We have a representative for the Community Club. No report? Okay. I suppose our Community Club is not here to report about our great walk uh, Great fundraising event raised over $50,000. Oh, sorry, I don't have the exact number, but the uh, parents and community came out and supported our students, support our school, and our community club does a lot of great work to support the teachers, the staff, the administration. So thank you very much to our community club. That's our version of uh, PTA for those of you who may not know. Yeah, there is, there is one that was turned in that was blank, so I don't know who to call on. Oh, thank you. Uh, that one's uh, completed already. Thank you. Uh, okay, we'll go on to 6F Tri Valley Silver Reports. There's nothing to report. That's our special education uh, local area. And uh, 6G Alameda County School Boards Association Report. So they met on October 2nd. I was not able to attend that because of the death of my uncle. But I did talk to Penny Peck, who is on that board, and she said that it was an excellent meeting. Um, that they are highlighting new laws that affect us. And so we can, she sent me the link that it's just csba.org. So if you look on that link, you can go in and see the, the new laws that are highlighted that, that they're calling our attention to. So that's pretty much it. It would have been a good meeting to help you. Great. Thank you. Uh, seven, community comments from the community. Again, we've got 20 minutes. Uh, three minutes per person. So, uh, first person we have uh, was called on under Amber McKnight. Is she, oh, that's right, Amber spoke, yes. Yeah. I'm just gonna sit down slowly. I'm right back up. Okay. <laughs> Hello again. Um, this one's going to be a little bit shorter and sweeter. Um, I have had a weird year. I think we all have had a weird year. I actually had a nice conversation with Trustee Hurley uh, earlier about her weird year, which I hope it's not kind of fast. That sucks. I'm still all right. As I sat up, I was thinking about the external picture. Um, this has been a weird year because, as a school and as a community, we have gone through a lot. And I realize for people outside of both Snow and the school, it's hard to understand how difficult things like being a commuter school with COVID are. You don't get to go outside and play with your neighbor children and your pods. You have to coordinate 
Zoom play dates, Zoom Girl Scout meetings, where you bring things door to door. Um, I don't particularly like talking about a lot of the personal life, but at this point I've gone full hog, so we're just getting butt wild with it now. Um, this year, we lost a beloved pet. My husband's grandfather died suddenly. We had the flood. They thought my son had cancer. I almost um, lost a family member this year, a separate one that I'm not going to name because my cousin is watching this live stream and I didn't help her. Um, it has been very difficult and very hard. And if you have the luxury of a community that you can call and write the principal, the secretary, the volunteers, the 4-H members and say, hey, my kid needs more time today. She's really, really having a hard time. Hey, I know that you're really busy, but would you mind pulling her out during lunch to talk to her because she's having a bit? Hey, Alice is really worried about some of the other kids on the playground because they're not listening to goggle ball rules. Like, this is a constant thing with constant involvement. And for us to be at a point where I don't want to come to these board meetings, they're awful. They are awful. They come out with people deliberately going out of their ways to misconstrue what's going on. Nobody cared about the flag not being on the pole. Please let me say that louder. Nobody cared. We didn't care. It was only there because somebody stole it. If we did Trustee Romo's resolution where our flag pole is restricted to the American state flag, I have not had a single parent object to that. The only thing they objected to was their free speech being restricted by no longer being able to fly anything anywhere. We are totally okay with these differences. That's the whole point. We are a school that cares about each child, not every child, because it's equal access to education and an equitable education. And I will not be back, so I will miss you all. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> uh, sorry. Next person is uh, Irene Martin. I'm back to remind you that the election of 2022 was not a mandate. This community is deeply divided. People are hurting. The tax of $22 million compounded imposed on 300 households for a small school that serves 273 students does not make sense to many voters, half of the voters. People are hurting. We are now paying double or triple what we used to pay for our homeowner's policy if we were able to keep it. For $50, we walk out of the grocery store with a small bag of groceries. It takes $70 to fill our gas tank. It is the 30 years of tax obligation that nearly 50% of the voters are not happy with. This is not Ruby Hill or Castlewood Heights. This is Sonoma. When the idea was first brought up about a more balanced and inclusive oversight committee, the person doing that was personally attacked. The oversight committee should include six positions filled by those who are not enthusiastic about a very large levy for 30 years imposed on 300 households for a small school. Those of us who support this suggestion also then were subjected to insults, ignoring, platitudes, and stalling. We continued to learn after the fact that there was a rush to make decisions, earmark funding, sign contracts, and move along as quickly as possible. Being informed afterwards is not openness and inclusion. Now, one of my neighbors who signed the petition to expand the oversight committee to 13 members made a suggestion that made a lot of sense to me. If we're stuck with this debt, let's pay it off early and at least save some of that interest. If we can pay the debt off in 20 years, we would save 10 years of interest. So let's get serious about fundraising. That means everybody, staff, students, parents, community. 
Let's have candy sales, white elephant sales, pancake breakfast, so on and so forth. And let's ask our non-resident parents whose children attend Sanol Glen School to make a voluntary, voluntary annual donation to pay off the debt group. Let's save 10 years of interest. And finally, I have, uh, I sent off a note, not a letter, but a note to uh, Andrew Turnbull to see if we could get this uh, on informs and all. He, he won't be able to get it to it until next uh, week. So it covered the mischaracter, uh, mischaracterization and of Sanol. That's the time you can finish up your remarks. So I ran off copies and I'll read them with you so that you can read the note that I sent to Andrew. Thank you very much. Thank you. No clapping, no cheering, no cheering, please. Thanks. Uh, Chris Boberts. Hi, my name is Chris and um, I've been here before. Uh, let's see, these are my own personal remarks. Uh, do not raise that brush oversight committee or anything that I want. Uh, okay, to quote, just trying to do school business and save us on legal costs. And quote, quote, this is a simple quick meeting to try and save the school some money and streamline things. So more money will go toward kids' education. Quote, both from Chesky Jurgensen. As my professional role within procurement logistics requires daily fiscal responsibility and attention to efficiency, I can appreciate these sentiments. However, upon my research, I have I'm having a hard time grounding them, if I may. One, performance issued uh, for legal services rendered by the district from 2020 to 2023. As of these are public record, attached to each agenda, all checks written can be viewed uh, in, in these attachments uh, on the agendas archived there. Uh, in, so from 2020, $11,267 for legal fees. 2021, $12,669. 2022, $10,799. So $10,000, $11,000, $12,000. So far in 2023, $36,512. Notably, only $400 of this was issued before May, suggesting that the rest, $36,000, has been issued in the last five months. Two warrant issued for more than $10,000 apiece for the equivalent of 2022. You may ask, is that from the bond that we're doing contracts? No, this has all been paid out to Fagan, Friedman, and Fort Ross, LPs, Snow Glens, uh, District Legal Services. I wouldn't otherwise expect an RFP for legal services to be placed on the agenda if it weren't for running up legal fees by three to four times. Result, direct increase in expenses for the school. Second, I have had personal conversations with parents of the school community debating who are already in the process of unenrolling from Sonoma Glen. So many so that I would have to remove my shoes to count the number of families. That was my biggest joke. Uh, this is a direct decrease in income for the school, not to mention current enrollment of 268, 269, no matter what, uh, and a wait list of zero to enroll. When, by all accounts, the latest is always consistent of at least a few students pending enrollment. Result, direct decrease in income for the school. Uh, three, the sheriff's department's here. Uh, I'm sure they have other things that they would like to be doing on Tuesday night. Uh, this is not taking into account the hours of added teacher staff and parents' time. Uh, all of that to say, please consider the resources you are entrusted with. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Joe Hurley. I came here at the last meeting, and uh, the first thing I mentioned was how we shouldn't lose sight of the priority of kids. And all these discussions about other things and all the disputes aren't putting kids first. We now have children, and I know this because I've talked to them who feel they're harassed because of this issue. Uh, the issue's beyond that. I'm not sure any third grader that anybody would want, for example, somebody explaining what bisexual means to a third grader. But now we're, we're supposed to uh, go forward. And if we're going to put the kids first, we should keep that in mind. Our staff, our employees, our teachers should all 
keep that in mind. Um, and also hope that the inference that anybody who disagrees with a particular board member is a bigot would, would have some response. There'd be an apology to Sonolians who uh, actually kept up on what was being said. Uh, instead, we've had uh, violence. And the violence has been pretty much on one side. Threats. I mean, I don't know how many people realize the president of the school board actually took his family and left his house to make sure he was safe on getting night. Uh, others are feeling harassed when, when uh, they come. That's really highly wrong. But when you use extreme language, that gets encouraged. Um, another thing about the kids that nobody ever mentions, and this goes back for decades, we have people in Samoa with children who pay for the way, and they choose not to bring them to Samoa land. Now, that's a group of children we ought to be concerned about. What's wrong with that? Do we know how many? It wouldn't take a lot of effort, but I think we should have some way to get that number and see what can be done to improve, and therefore improve the genuine local support of the school. If you have parents who don't think it's good enough and are willing to pay twice, uh, maybe they can be convinced. That's an issue that I think should come up in a more formal way. Um, and then last, we have what is now a bunch of resolutions, not one resolution, a supposed great support for everybody at this school. But somehow, all that support, not one thing, not, not one thing on that list says let's support the kids. And there's something wrong with you. Make a list like that. And you don't have any support for the kids. Just all the adults. We need to think through things better. And the kids ought to be first. And anybody who isn't putting them first ought to get the blinders off and realize that. That's what I want to do. Thank you. Next, uh, Ronnie Zeiss. Rod Zeiss. There he is. Coming out of the dark. I just heard two very good speeches, so I'm kind of torn with what I want to show you guys on this. I'm going to follow Irene. Is that better? <laughs> anyway, my name is Rodney Zeiss. Uh, my family's been here since about 1931 or longer. Doesn't mean I'm special in it, it just means I've been around town to people on my family and how we behave and how we act. I'm talking for myself and my family. I have come to front of this board for multiple times. I have sat here and shared my thoughts. I always try to stay neutral and try to open people's minds. And since I already brought this up on Measure J, I want to follow up on it. And I've said the same thing that I'm saying now. When Measure J came through, misinformation was given. Period. I can actually have videotapes that someone else took, and I took the same video, and at the key moments, parts are missing. That doesn't make you upset, it does me. People want the personal property on trespass and stole their private property on signs. I know one woman for sure, the, my wife, that felt she was verbally assaulted because she didn't want to talk about Measure J, but they knew I was against it. And I've heard about others. Police were called, basically based on Someone posted a no on J sign on a telephone pole. Police are called for that, waste of their time. And then following that, there'll be another sign about something else that also broke the law, nothing said. These actions were made by a very few people, but it did make me upset. I have talked to some, some I have not talked to yet. I try to be respectful. But I ask you to be respectful for everyone. People, we were bonding. We were one group. 
and we let a measure break us up. And if anyone challenges that measure J, guess what? They get attacked. Hurley was attacked when she questioned measure J. As soon as Ryan Jurgensen had the idea of maybe having an oversight committee that represented more people, then he was attacked. Now there may be other things involved. Yes. Run as a time. So thank you, you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. So next, careful with the mic. Next is uh, Jackie Kota. Okay. Thank you. Um, the 2012, uh, 2012 Smith Modernization Act often associated with leftist narratives, currently demands our full attention, given its potential to sway the misinformed through sanctioned propaganda, like the gentleman was just talking about. A recent headline in Forbes today said, quote, Hamas threatens to execute Israeli civilian hostages for unprompted attacks on Gaza. Unprompted attacks. Raises concerns about misinformation these headlines propagate. Such irresponsible reporting has consequences, as witnessed during the COVID-19 pandemic, where media-driven narratives and special interests precipitated hasty, intrusive government actions, such as vax and mask unlawful edicts, at the expense of our Fourth Amendment rights. The offense of BLM sham, which propagated its false assertions of systemic racism in policing and called for police defunding, to the lily-livered efforts of grifters who continue to push to promote the grooming of children under the facade of inclusivity. The imperative at hand necessitates a return to the fundamental responsibility as board member of a board member centered on safeguarding the well-being of children and ensuring that the administration maintains a consistent and responsible approach to the education of our youth. It is important, more important than ever, to protect children from outside evil sanctioned propaganda. It has been the norm since 2012. Parents need to support and advocate the advocacy of their elected officials to safeguard the integrity of our educational institutions, fostering an environment where children can receive fundamental education devoid of external agendas or malevolent propaganda. The community wishes to express its gratitude to the board for approval of resolution, resolution 23 20, 2024-08, even in the face of unwarranted death threats from individuals who, while purporting to champion inclusivity, have exhibited behavior con con contrary to their claims. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next, Peggy Carpenter. Um, I'm not going to speak very long, but I used to sit up in the front like these three did, and there's some other people in the audience today, too, that also are board members. Okay. Um, anyway, my point is, is that one of the reasons that there's a lot of friction is not allowing people to speak and be heard. There have been a couple of meetings that I've gone to the last two for this, where it was 20 minutes. 20 minutes allows not even seven people to have a full three minutes. When you have a lot of people in a room, you need to be using your power as board members to allow for even shortening the amount of time people speak to two minutes, say, but let everybody speak. When I was a board member, we spent um, many hours sometimes on difficult issues. And it's like, but you listen to people. And that to me is being kind, is being considerate. And sometimes people are going to be a little agitated and intense. We can handle it. I mean, I have three children. I've had to handle it. Okay, but at any rate, that's my point. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, and, and uh, we're, we're up on time for community comments, but uh, to that end, that's part of the reason why we separated out A, B. We're going to have 60 minutes of time to speak on those items. So uh, we'll go ahead and continue our agenda to item 8A, report discussion, possible action to approve the proposal 
for architectural and engineering services with Hamilton Aiken Architects for the installation of three classrooms at the rear of Smallburn School. Is there any comment from board members on that proposal dated September 28th? No, but I have a question. I thought Mr. Hamilton was in here. As part of our warrant that we're going to be um, ratifying later, there's $5,475 that is being spent for him. And so I, I'm curious as this, if this is coming from the general fund, it looks like it, or is this coming from some of the bond money? I'm still unclear how the bond money is being paid, if it has started to be paid. Out of that three million, if so, is Maureen writing these checks? I've never voted to approve that, but I just don't know. So these are questions I didn't know. I thought Mr. Hamilton was going to be here tonight, but just asking. Thank you. Do you have anything to clarify that for her? No. no? Okay. So well, we can. Uh, thank you. We can look into that a little bit later, but. Um, yeah, it's, and I don't have an answer for you on that one, but that amount is within the, the purview of the superintendent. Um, any comments from you, Trustee Okay. And community comments, we do have one from uh, Debbie Ferrari on 8A. Thank you. We should step back before we plan to borrow more bond money and come up with and agree on exactly how all the three million we already borrowed will be spent. Then go ahead and do that work. This is a 30-year bond, not even started paying yet. The excuses for spending all the money now isn't making sense. That's accruing interest early on. As I've asserted many times, it was promised prior to the election by the board and superintendent at a meeting that only what was needed would be spent related to the bond and as needed. I was there. We talked about using other funds that can and have been raised. A former uh, board president mentions uh, that bake sales won't cut it, which I felt was disrespectful. And what happens, what happens after you spend all the money over just a few years? This money should last. This is no different than a loan and needs to be thought of as such by every taxpayer. This was never a number we were supposed to back into. That was not the agreement, and there have been movements and statements made that those in charge would see what all they could get done for the money rather than to do what is needed as needed. Currently, taxpayers, some much more than others, are paying interest on the old bond and accruing interest on the new bond simultaneously. We, only, we understood that only one bond would be paid at a time. Accruing cost is still paying. Overall cost is a consideration, not just what you pay per month. In fact, perhaps lease, lease back is very expensive to taxpayers. The overall cost comparison has not been made clear. The advertising for the bond I found to be deceptive and it was overly polished. I do know that many who pushed and voted for the bond are not the ones paying for it and that's the reason why the oversight committee is required by law. It used to be that 66% vote required. Now only 55% is required and one reason is because they put an oversight committee into place and I don't know what other rules came along with dropping from 66 to 55. I've heard several speeches seeming to claim the committee doesn't do much or it's after the fact or it doesn't matter. It's untrue that it doesn't make a difference. In fact, especially if it doesn't matter, it's inexplicable that we have received so much pushback on adding to this committee. I don't need to be educated on what the committee does or doesn't do. I just don't want my tax dollars to be taken for granted. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, any discussion from any of the board members on 8A? And do we have a motion? I second the motion to approve it. You know, I really would like to have somebody just explain the broken down expenses a little better. He's charging us for a bid, $3,848. Okay, contract documents, $44,898. Okay, 
you know, if he were here, I'd be asking him to kind of break this down and, and show us what justifies some of these these charges at $128,280. And usually when companies come in and put a bid, they do so free, hoping to get the job. So I don't know if we can table this, if this is something that will hold up his but I was hoping tonight that he was going to come and present this when he's not here. So that's uh, our next normal board meeting is not until December. So if we table it, it will take some time unless we have um, a special meeting, something quick just to approve this if it's necessary. Um, My comments are that, that, that we do need the portable in, and we need to keep this process moving. Uh, it's for the students it's in order to keep things going, and if we delay it, the students are the ones who lose. So I would go ahead and prove it. I think if you have questions, if there's something wrong, you can talk to them directly and ask them. You already know I have concerns about his transparency <laughs> and honesty. I don't share what it's with you, but I think at the end of the day, I think we need to have the contract in place to do the work done. I, I second that motion. Um, we'll go ahead and put it for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think I was Okay. And one say. What? Okay, that is 8A. All right. 8B. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, public comments. Um, do either of the board members want to make comments prior to community comment on 8B? 9, 10, 11. Okay. So, uh, in order to help with community comments, uh, we will be taking all three, 8B, 9, 10, 11. We will have a lot of time here uh, to discuss. Uh, 8A, we did. Is there another 8A? I gave him a copy of mine. Agenda, and I have someone else's name with my 8A. It's different. Yeah, I agree with that. He changed the agenda. Uh, I don't know. So when I download it from the school. Sorry, one moment. Okay. Because I was going to start on 8A2 also, but my smart class D. Maybe his. I don't mind the school. Well, I have a new one. Yeah, I don't. There was two this time. Sorry for the confusion here. I don't have any other eight A's up here. Sorry. Oh no, I lied. I found it at the bottom hidden. Ken, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ken. Ken, go ahead and come up. Um, that we have more than three minutes left, so we'll give Ken his three minutes. Um, Please share your thoughts. I apologize for not getting lost before we move on to AB. Yeah, sure. Hello. Uh, I, I agree with a number of the people tonight that a lot of this has started with Measure J. The previous board and superintendent have a history of subterfuge and acts and omissions to achieve their goals. Measure J had people believing the school would close that there had been no earthquake retrofit, that the roof and electrical had all failed and needed to be completely replaced. However, I will say that once you open the building doing construction, you are now subject to whatever the current statutes are. No new building. And I did notice at the last meeting that uh, Mr. Savage put in there that Sounded like this is being raised and a new building's coming here. We've asked during the meetings for views of the school property from overhead so we can see what and where is happening. And we're still waiting. Um, we were told this is a no cost bond issue, not by the board or the superintendent, by, but by some of the uh, propagandists in favor of it. And perhaps they're justifying their own thing, but I can't justify no cost at my house when it shows up on my bill. 
if anybody dared to point out the truth of what was going on, many school supporters who were probably uninformed, harassed, bullied, intimidated, and ridiculed any opposition. I've had numerous gals who just want to walk downtown, they don't want to be in politics, they don't, don't want to hear this stuff, be harassed to the point where they come crying in one of the first houses they end up at. They won't walk downtown anymore because of what's been going on. This board needs to be professional. You need to be responsive to the community and the superintendent, who is not here unfortunately, also needs to act. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this does not happen at the school, but I hope not. Um, a common response for somebody that needs or requests information on the board is, you have to be nice to Molly. That's not an option. I ask for something from somebody with information, they provide it. Um, I also would say, at this point, that any board member or their family that puts down or uses derogatory words or phrases to other board members should be censored. That is unacceptable in a board behavior from anybody up there. So, thank you. Thank you, Ken. I did put in for HD when I was following the agenda for the school, when I printed out, gave the other agenda. So I also want to speak on it. On 8B. Uh, well, BHA, the A portion. It says B on mine because I was following the agenda that I printed out. Which would be the architect? Uh, yes. Okay. Come on down. 8A, wrong size. Hello again. Hi. Oh, there you go. <laughs> My name is Robbie Zeiss again. I represent myself. Uh, first, I want to address is we're talking about the building to the back, building, adding on. Uh, Ken Horton brought this up a long time ago, and I also backed it up. Just concerned about the traffic for the kids. Um, we should have some traffic impact analysis study done because we're going to have construction workers, people who are around. It does get bad. Back my kid had an accident three weeks ago, right here. Minor, but it still had an accident with my truck, obviously. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is the office. We have two offices, biggest rooms in the school, to my knowledge. You can combine those two and make one. I hear in the past by reading and watching videos complaints of how children are whole, sad, and grieving because they lost their classroom for a flood. While we have two offices. One could be merged with the other, and you can give the kids one classroom, one more now. Instead, from January last year, all this time, and no one's even thought about it, I brought it up once before. Bowling's office can be easily, easily converted for the kids. Isn't the kids number one? Isn't that what you people are saying? Because they are with me. So my suggestion that maybe we should have some people to, to the board is talk to Molly, open one of those classrooms, those offices up, and open it for the kids because they are the number one. That's my suggestion. I'm upset that this hasn't been done before, especially when one person is actually sitting out there saying the kids are breathing sad and cold more than once. No, the person's not here today. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we're done with public comment for 8A. I apologize for any confusion. We're moving on to 8B. We're going to have public comments. We will, can you set the timer for 60 minutes? 60 minutes, yep. And we'll just go through all the public comment just so it's fair, all those people who put in comment cards ahead of time uh, for 8B. And 
total. So we'll have plenty of time for community comment. So 60 minutes on the clock. We're going to start with Jack Dakota. Thank you, Jackie Cota Pleasanton. Um, I am uh, here tonight. Wanted to since you separated, I wanted to just specifically go down the list um, on nine specifically requested to say no, ten no, and eleven yes. Um, since these resolutions were grouped together, um, my comments were based on that. Um, but the resolution eight, I'm sorry, resolution eight will be repealed by uh, number 10 and this protects children and government institutions from agenda-based indoctrination um, children in our community have faced a conspicuous display of the blm flag in classrooms which is viewed by many as offensive given its false accusations of systemic racism police defunding as well as other flags presented as symbols of inclusivity that actually promote harm particularly related to child welfare and hormonal and genital mutilation. These actions are an attempt to indoctrinate children into ideologies that challenge the nuclear family, raising questions about neutrality of government institutions. The rise to oppose the agenda item B10 um, because it, um, it groups those three resolutions together, but they kind of contradict each other. Um, but by repealing resolution eight, which is uh, 10 tonight, you're subjecting children once again to being exposed to ideological agendas. What safeguards will be in place to prevent a teacher from displaying a Hamas flag in their classroom, potentially unsettling Jewish children, once, once protections against indoctrination are revoked? A precedent was set when children of law enforcement were exposed to the display of BLM flags accompanying um, proclamations. The genuine biblical significance of rainbow embodies God's profane, profound grace and compassion towards deeply flawed humanity. God's joy lies in the redemption of sinners, not in their demise. However, such discussions do not find a place in elementary institutions, particularly when activists frequently alter symbolisms, rendering it ever-changing and potentially confusing. Jewish sh children should not endure a teacher's support for Hamas flag, and likewise, all children should be shielded from the indoctrination through prevailing co corporate news narratives. The American flag, a unifying symbol, represents all Americans, transcending color and creed. The community opposes the agenda item 10, unless uh, resolutions are individually addressed by 9 and no, 10 and no, 11 and yes. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Bob Philman. Good evening, my name is Bob Frillman, 40 year resident of Sonol. Uh, I'd like to speak on the, the, the I'll say that I, I went to sleep about a month ago and woke up in the land of dueling resolutions here, it seems. The, uh, the first one, there's a resolution before the board to, uh, I'll use the word praise, I can't think of another one, Mrs. Barnes, for her efforts. Uh, I'm sure that Miss Mickey could put together a heck of a uh, letter of commendation or an award or a certificate of appreciation. Do we need a resolution? Uh, no place I've ever worked for doing stellar work was there ever a board resolution to uh, reward me. Uh, I, I think it's over the top myself. Uh, it's too bad that uh, Board President Jurgensen eliminated clapping because I would applaud his decision to raise the American flag and the bear flag only in front of some old land. As I understand it from having talked to him, uh, that, uh, that rule, if you will, in no way limits a teacher's ability to use any emblem, flag, badge, banner, whatever, in the course of education in their classroom. I'll relate a story to you that my wife reminded me of this. My 53-year-old daughter is a critically acclaimed clinical psychologist with a number of publications under her belt. She has held that her teacher, she had a third grade teacher at the New Haven School District. I wish Jim O'Loughlin was here because he was in HR over there, Mr. Wong, who subsequently became Dr. Wong. On a regular basis, 
the kids in the classroom would prepare you know, po uh, posters or letters or notes that they would hang. Everyone is loved. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is equal. Everyone's the same. And those kids were taught to walk that walk, not talk the talk and hide behind a flag or a banner or a badge or anything else. And with that, thank you for your time. Thank you. Case Reese. I haven't been super involved in the issue of the rainbow flag until I found out from the news that our school board president was getting threats made against his family because his leadership was voting against flying that part. I had to see that on TV. This led me to think, thinking of how we are being told to promote kindness. Does this not apply to the folks who want the special interest flag flown at Sinol? It seems like some people are under the impression that if we fly the flag, somehow kindness will be ruling here at Sunol Glen. From our five years here at Sunol, we have experienced nothing but kindness. My daughter was involved in some fourth grade drama last year, and the fourth grade teacher and the principal got involved and taught the group of six little girls how to treat each other with kindness and help them all restore their relationships. Kindness has been the norm at Sunol. Now we're having all this meanness over a flag. Meanness in the name of inclusivity and kindness. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. We already have a flag that represents inclusivity. The United States flag is as inclusive as one can get, and let's stick with that. Thank you. No clapping, please. Uh, George Hobel. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Jorge Cobell. Uh, please, um, sorry about saying this, uh, um, I'm not here to offend anyone. If I do even come up wrong, I apologize ahead of time. Uh, just want to get that out of the way here before that. Um, just, um, my, like, like I said, my name is Jorge Cobell. Uh, I just uh, want to share two stories for you guys to see uh, what is uh, on my head, what probably best can be. Uh, what I'm here for. A good friend of mine, I did work with Fremont Unified School District for about five years as a school bus driver. I was being respectful to everyone and, and their beliefs in it. Uh, now, a, friend, a good friend of mine that used to work in a uh, former junior high got fired as a teacher, uh, as a, was a science teacher, for passing out gospel trucks in school. So I get that. The, uh, up now, the guys have been removed from. Uh, Places like school, and I have to say that I feel quite suspicious about that. But now, the last thing that I have is really bad is that I have an autistic child, and the other day he came back uh, with uh, with a flag, with a rainbow flag. They call it the rainbow flag. So I reach out to the teacher and I say, you know, how about my son who was at home with a, a, um, a rainbow flag? And she said, what well, it was given to all of us. To Beautiful, all the children. So I, I really mean no harm by saying this. I think if I would give you, I say uh, Jesus, because I am Christian, obviously, and that's what I can tell. Uh, Jesus stickers to put them on the kids. Will you do it? She says no. And I say, why do you want to do it? And she says, because I will get fired. So um, I do want to say this I love everyone. Regardless of flag or no flag, my uh, plan of salvation when it comes to Christ is the same, right? But if you are not allowed to have the word of God or God's name in one of these places, well, I, I mean, we should be equal, right? We all want to have a freedom of speech. I have heard so much about attacks and things like that over uh, freedom of speech, and I thought we are. We have the First Amendment, right? That we can, I live in this country for 32 years, and I live 30 years in Fremont. So um, I, I, what I'm saying is like it would be just fair to say, all right, let's allow this flag, but it also allow flag back into the schools. So the children will have 
a knowledge of both parties, right? Now, if, if um, again, if, if you were to do, to do that, that's very understandable because we know that we're being uh, treated equally and fair to, to both the believers or, or, or not believers. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. Uh, next, Margie Corey. <laughs> At the last board meeting, Molly had this an opportunity to talk from the, from about the American flag, meeting. I just but chose well. instead to speak Could only about the white. rainbow flag. Okay. Let me share Thank with you. you my love for this country and what the American flag means to me. My parents, my brother, and my sister were in a concentration camp during World War II, where Japan invaded Guam. The adults were forced, along with the children, to witness beheading, along with brutal beatings with the leaders of our villages who resisted to keep the locals in line. My mother was pregnant and delivered my sister while in the concentration camp. When the Marines first stepped foot on the shores of Guam, they knew that they might not come home. And if they did, their mental and physical well-being would be forever changed. They did not ask the people of Guam their sexual proclivities, their religious beliefs, nor judge them on the color of their skin. I will always have a special place in my heart for the soldiers who fought so valiantly to give my family their freedom. And I will never forget. I will never take our freedoms for granted, nor what our American flag stands for. I'm a little kind of shaking right now. It would be nice if we could come together as a community but if not, we should at least be civil to each other without resorting to name calling, promoting lies and threats. Juan and Linda were called homophobes, not true. Members of the hate group, not true. Along with many other obscene adjectives, incendiary marks such as this perpetuates anger and promotes justification for violence. It gets worse. They both had death threats, with Ryan being the receiving end of most including his wife and children. Ryan's children and wife were also harassed at school. The very nature that the LGBTQ community wants their children to feel safe at school are depriving Ryan's children of the same. These threats of violence, hostile messages, harassment, intimidation, and threats, death threats, from anonymous bullies and unrepeat bullies has no place in our society. It's counterproductive, and the message the LGBTQ community is sending is its own credibility. We are failing our future generations if we continue to have distractions in the classrooms. The main focus for the board and the school superintendent should always be on the education of all, I repeat, all our children. Neutrality should be a priority in order to achieve this. The very nature of the American flag is inclusivity for all. And for this very main reason, my husband and I respectfully, with a clear conscience, support the decision made by the board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mutt. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. It looks like M-U-T-T. -T. Oh, Matt. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was confused. Okay, Matt. That, that's a first. Okay. Okay. Hello. My name is Matthew Sylvester. I'm a parent of a student at Sonal Glen. I have been a resident of Sonal for just about 10 years now. I was out helping fill sandbags and shovel mud from people's homes during the flood. I have donated countless amounts of vegetables, flowers, and nursery stars from my farm to the school over the course of the years. I care about Sonal, and I care about our school. I've heard two of our board members say we need to focus on education, bring back things to the basics, and teach math and science, etc. cetera. Um, well, we can walk and chew gum at the same time, people. So the school hung a pride flag up um, <clears throat> during the month of June for National Pride Month. OK, so what? That doesn't mean the staff suddenly stopped teaching math and science. That doesn't mean the teachers suddenly forgot how to teach. 
Pride flags are flown at schools during June across the country. This isn't some strange new phenomenon. And sure, pride flags weren't around as much when we were kids, but times change, society progresses, and that's a good thing. Let's remember that it wasn't too long ago that black kids and white kids couldn't even drink from the same water fountain or go to the same school. There was a time not so long ago that women couldn't own property or get a credit card. We want society to progress. Let's remember that Sonal Glenn hung the pride flag up on the fence the last two years, and guess what? Our test scores still have been great, our education has been top notch, and our students have continued to learn all the basics. Why? Because our school and staff are excellent. Like I said, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm opposed to the board's original flag resolution, and I'm in favor of repealing it because there was never a problem to begin with. The school was never in danger of being sued, the school was never in danger of slipping academically, and the school never had a problem to begin with. And now we do have a problem because of how the resolution was written. Teachers have had to take down peace flags, 4-H flags, welcome to school flags, and other such flags. And this has taken away from our school spirit and has negatively impacted our school and school staff. We have repeatedly asked for a compromise on this and have ignored each and every time. Please vote to repeal the resolution so that another one can be made this time with all three of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Please note my name. Stephanie Sito. Okay. So I'm also a parent here. And I just want to give you a few facts, that a little history lesson. So do you know that after the dissolve of the Soviet Union, uh, Marxist communists had their first meeting at UC Berkeley and tried to figure out what should they do and how do they continue marching? And a lot of those are actually intellects and academia, they're professors. So from that meeting, 45 communist goal has come up and number 17 is get control of the school, use them as transmission bell for socialism and co uh, current uh, communist propaganda, soften the curriculum and get control of the school associ uh, teacher association, put party line in the textbook. Okay, so you, you're basically seeing a political movement here is not about the flag, it's about how they are trying to control the school system. Okay, so, <clears throat> Um, I wonder, after our last meeting, we had 20-something media out here, and um, it's already done and settled. And why are we stirring up the pot again? What happened? Who did that? Who invited all this activist group to come here to this very, very quiet school in the middle of nowhere and put all our kids in, je in jeopardy? And those are the people that I don't know. And actually put Ryan and his family in that threat. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? We need more police officers in this area. We do. We do need more police officers in this area. Okay? So do you know what happened in China 60 years ago with the cultural Marxism revolution? Do you know what happened? Because of this Marxism ideology, people turn, uh, neighbor turn against neighbor, uh, kids turn against to their parents. The whole country was lost. 10 million people died. We're in the middle of cultural revolution right here, right now. Well, you have to read a little history. What happened 60 years ago in cultural revolution in China? We lost a lot of people. Okay, coming here as an immigrant, seeing all this through an immigrant lens, I'm seeing a history repeating itself, okay? It's just a matter of time. We are in a pivotal moment for America. We either stand up for that flag and be most inclusive of all, or we, we, we push America off the cliff right now, right here. You have a choice to choose right now. Don't think that it's something about kindness, no. Come on. 
Um, thank you, everyone. It disturbs me to have to be here tonight to stand up in defense of our school and our students. I am a mother and a grandmother, and I have always been taught the importance of our education. As we all know, education widely serves as the agency for one's chance at success, the opportunity for our students to learn, grow, and develop the skills to truly impact society. There is no question that having a quality education is the bedrock of carrying our economically challenged out of poverty and gives all people equal opportunity to succeed and good, um, a good education is imperative to a child's future. Many of you here tonight are not even here as Sinoleans, but as concerned parents who have transferred your students in. Why? Let's be honest. It's because we all want our children to have the best education possible and Sinol USD provides that to us. A quality education in the present day where California ranks 45 out of 50 in national standards is rare and must be protected. So as the parents, teachers, and leaders of our school district, why are we over-politicizing our students? Why are we dragging a political war into our school system? The role for schools is to play and what parents expect is simple. We simply want our students to receive a quality education, nothing more, nothing less. Arithmetic, reading, writing. Our students need to focus on the basic subjects that will build out their future foundation. No matter the background, ethnicity, gender, or identity, our schools are here to continue to serve our students equally. Our American flag already represents that same exact sentiment. This flag war, if you haven't already noticed, is hurting our children. We must come to accept that our American flag represents every person here, no matter one's identity, and work towards what unites us all, quality education for our students. President Jurgensen has consistently stood for this quality of our students' education and is committed to these values and our kids the same way we were about our own children. Let's not let this politics suffocate our school and drown out the real mission of why we are, are all here. Let's not let this distract us from what matters most. Our school system needs its teachers, parents, and staff focused on bringing the best education we can for our kids. For their sake, let's please not screw this up, you guys. Let's get back to work and give our students the best. I also just want to say real quick, is Amber McKnight, is she a kindergarten teacher here? Or she's Sorry, just a parent? We can't call okay. her. I just find it interesting that the lady was talking about kindness and inclusivity, and she made a beeline for me right. the last that's, time that I was here. Thank you. Okay. Um, Liliana, Liliana Barajas, Barajas, sorry. Hi, I'm Lily. Um, to start off, I'm young, as you can see. Um, I don't have the wisdom that I know a lot of you guys do have, um, and I know that you can often be super reckless and damaging and very fast and aggressive. Um, but I do believe that nothing will be done under the shadows of polite speech or religious belief. Um, I'm asking to please be cautious of hurting the generations after you, your own children. Um, and if there's anything that we as a community should fear, it's the devastating consequences of disappointing these children. Children who have fallen victim to being caught in what really is just an adult argument. Fly the flag, or don't fly, fly the flag. Um, hearts will be broken if we find our own children can no longer look us in the eyes. And I know that my heart will break for those children and for everyone here, because I know that for most of us, it's not intentional. And as someone who is a person of color, the American flag has never been for me. I've never felt it was for me. Um, I'm sure that the officers in Sonoma, I've spoken to many of them, very kind people. But I lived for half of my life in the Bay Area, where I was sexually and verbally harassed by police officers from ages nine to up. So I feel like if we're going to say that the American flag is inclusive for all, we should really be talking about what it means to be inclusive. Because I'm not included just because I'm not killed. I'm included because I'm given the same opportunities that everyone else is. And I'm not. This school, I went here, had so much fun here. I have made many friends, loved all the teachers. 
Um, students would go around saying gay and the S slur like it was a bad thing. Um, and students who were of color were often treated cautiously, like you didn't really know what to do with them. Not necessarily in a bad way, just confused. And I feel like, I hope that being kind pushes everyone to make changes because kindness is difficult for me. <laughs> Calm is difficult for me, but I do respect that everyone here has lived a long life and has suffered many things, individual to all of you, I'm sure. Um, so I really hope that you guys show me that kindness is worth something. And that's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Uh, James Lauder. <coughs> Board President Jurgensen and Snow Glen School Board. I'm opposed to uh, Mr. Romo's uh, flag repeal resolution. School is no place for politics. The only goal of school board members should be to educate our students not involve them in partisan politics and culture wars. The board's decision to fly only the American and California flag was made to avoid political battles and legal issues, and it was made to avoid having to litigate different flags every board meeting. Yet here we are, Mr. Romo. Rather than move forward and bring our focus back to the children's education, this political and partisan resolution only seeks to divide. We need to band together as a community and say the vitriol must stop. The threats directed at our school board must stop. To all those here tonight from outside our community, we are not your test case for intimidation. We are not your laboratory for hate. Our school must remain safe and inclusive place for students, just as it always has. It's time to get back to the business of education. It's time to put the focus back on our kids. And I urge you to reject this resolution to get back to work. Uh, from another uh, board member's, former board member's uh, Facebook page, and uh, this will probably look familiar to you, Mr. Romo. Um, is this the, the kindness that you spread in our community, community members that come out to the board meetings, funny to put clown faces on them? Is this the tolerance that you talk about? Is this the inclusion? you guys refer to? This man is a Sonol Glen resident, voter, an Alameda County judge. How dare you disrespect him that way? Please keep it under control. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Mike Arana. Yeah. Good evening. I'm uh, visiting from up the road in the San Juan Valley area. I was out of town mm -hmm. September 12th, and so I watched the meeting of that evening remotely. I've come this evening to say thanks for the common sense displayed by board members Jurgensen and Curley in approving the flag resolution, and for the patience with which the two of you addressed what I consider your superintendent's insubordination. The United States and California state flags represent unifying aspects of our society, i.e. geographic jurisdictions and respective systems of governance, which include all of us. In contrast, the pride or so-called progress flag, when displayed by governmental agencies such as public schools, indicates support for a particular set of behaviors because LGBTQ, et cetera, status is only discernible externally via self-assertions or certain activities. And once behaviors enter the picture, rather than affiliations which represent everyone, then political, moral, and even religious threads become interwoven, as do the personal preferences of those who manage the governmental agencies involved. And then viewpoint discrimination becomes not just a concern, but an eventual legal liability. What occurs inevitably, and in any case, is division, disunity, disruption, and distraction from the proper business at hand, teaching and learning, of knowledge and skills in this case, as said in the later resolution. 
the kind of behavior that you witnessed here on September 12th. I noted that Superintendent Barnes held up the Prime or Progress flag and referred to it as the inclusivity flag, and then alleged certain personal characteristics that represent by its colors, e.g. red for perseverance, green for growth, gray for humility, etc. The gray is not one of the flag's colors, and the color meanings she cited turn out to be those of a couple of websites which are unrelated to the Pride or Progress flag. Further, those promoting that flag, the actual Pride or Progress flag, specify an entirely separate set of color meanings. Finally, the Pride or Progress flag began as the rainbow flag that was conceptualized by Harvey Milk and constructed by Gilbert Baker. Milk was described by his friend and biographer Randy Schultz as having had, quote, a pension for young waifs with substance abuse problems. In other words, in the book, read it, Mayor of Castro Street. What, we want to mark the eruption time? Uh, Maybe the time left. They go All right. Uh, and Milk was described, as I said, uh, in so many words, the pederast who fled prey on young people with drug habits. Baker was a drag queen who nicknamed himself Busty Ross as a play on Betsy Ross, the actual one credited with the first adopted Stars and Bars version of the American flag. So again, the pride or so-called progress flag is a direct and disreputable sign of division, not of unity. In contrast, the U.S. and state flags are signs of aspirational principles which should unify us all. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, Rod Zeiss. Okay, sorry, we'll skip that one. Thank you. Uh, please keep it under control, people. Thank you. No cheers, no cheers. Lisa Dispro. Lisa Distroud here. Come into the kitchen. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa Distroud. I'm a credentialed California teacher. I spent many, many years following the sexualization of education in California. And I want to tell you that. If you were to look into the California Teachers Union, you would discover that in 1980, they made a decision to be pro-LGBTQIA and to influence our public schools to align with that. In addition, um, this, the lady that spoke about the Cultural Revolution, I've been trained in the Cultural Tra Revolution. I sat in trainings for years and years and years paid by you to teach me a specific way to think. And part of that way to think was to reject the red, white, and blue. Part of that way to think was to prefer freedom of speech for some, but not for all. When, when uh, speakers have said that the American flag is the most inclusive, that's because we all have the same rights. It doesn't matter what your opinion, your age, your country of origin. I want to show you this one book, neither. This book is promoted in many schools. I don't know specifically if it's used here, but it's a very popular book, and it's used to indoctrinate children into a specific view of life that maybe their, their Muslim parents Maybe they're gay parents. Maybe their parents just don't align with and don't want them to come to school and have this sort of training from a teacher that their parents send them off to school every morning saying, be nice, listen to your teacher, do what she says or he says, and cooperate. I also want to show you this book called Who Are You? This is a very famous gender identity book. This is not the business of a credentialed teacher. I'm a credentialed teacher. I'm a parent and a grandparent. This is not my realm for anybody else's children but the people, the children in my own family. And I do want to point out that it's really interesting in California, the legal age for consent to sex is 18. Very, very few. <laughs> And, and so, no, none of your kids are 18. Why are we doing anything 
lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer. With the plus, there are over 50 groups represented by the plus. Look at queer in the world, and that means that if you wanted to really do it right by the LGBT flag, you would need 50 poles or multiple flags per that's, poll. That's time. Thank you. Uh, M. M. Huffaker. I've got a card for M. Huffaker. Is M. M. Is it Mary? Mike Huffaker? No? Okay. Uh, I cannot read this. It looks like there's three of them in a row. Uh, this one I can read. Austin Bruckner, Carrillo. Hey everyone, my name is Austin Bruckner Carrillo. I'm the president of Pastorelli Pride, the organization that in 2021 led the effort to hang the first Pride flag here in Sunil Glen. I would ask that for future uh, meetings, uh, perhaps a qualified staff member handle the public comment. Uh, President Jurgensen, we've watched you shuffle the cards and cherry pick folks to speak at each and every meeting. I want the record to show that I submitted uh, both an email uh, about 20 minutes ago to the superintendent as part of a public records request asking for copies of every public comment card submitted to today's meeting. And I hand walked over a handwritten note to your attorney of the day uh, requesting copies of every public comment card submitted today. You will note that they are numbered in the order received based off of staff's input. Again, I submitted a public records request. I expect those results as an allowed under the law. I want to talk about what the pride flag means. In June of 2021, we hung it on a fence. The earth didn't stop. The rapture didn't come. Gay kids felt more included in the end. Gay kids felt safer. They felt more supported. They felt championed to be themselves despite efforts by bad mothers of liberty to pulverize the remaining self-worth that a gay kid already has. The U.S. Flag Code provides specific instructions for the display of non-governmental flags, like the flag at a restaurant like McDonald's, my local credit union, or the pride flag. Flag bans are not patriotic. They are idiotic. They are hateful and they are designed to tell one group of students that they are somehow less than. It does not make a kid less gay. Brian and Linda, on September 12th, you supported a resolution, but you also were yet another voice in the choir of folks screaming at LGBTQ kids that there is something wrong with them, when in fact, the issue is you. Today, you have an opportunity to right a wrong, you have an opportunity to actually allow for your attorney to weigh in, which President Jurgensen did not allow at the September 12th meeting. You need to know if the resolution you passed would legally hold up in court because you didn't care. You did not allow your attorney the opportunity to speak publicly. How can you claim that you are good stewards of taxpayer funds? when you potentially left the school district open to lawsuits. Eight days later, we were passing out flags and stickers to students and staff were afraid that they could wear a sticker because they weren't sure if it was allowed under the policy. And I would remind you that you have a flag displayed in this room, which is a violation of your policy. That's time, thank you. Uh, Mike Grant. Mike Grant, I come from Dublin, and uh, like everybody around the Bay Area, we've been watching this circus that I think has turned into, a, you know, minus the clowns and the elephants jumping around. It was voted on, it was voted down, and yet it comes back. Now, I've got some experience on this from Dublin because they tried the same thing on the Dublin City Council. One of the members on the council decided that he didn't like the vote, so he went out and spun it all over for the LGBTQs across the state, including some of these 
city mayors and stuff like that. So these board members all got sued, or not sued, but harassed constantly, threatened, because the other side doesn't like the results of the finished product. And that's the problem with half of these things that are going on in this country now, is people don't realize you get one vote, when it goes down, if you don't like it, go back and start over and try a different way. This is absolutely ridiculous to be threatening our public officials. Who wants to be a city council member, a mayor, or even on the board of anything, when you got people that don't like the results? Well, that's fine, you can be on it. So, <clears throat> tonight, I've come here to talk a little bit about something else that has to do with indoctrination. I spent a year and a half in Russia, and that was before Gorbachev got overthrown. I was in China, Tiananmen Square. I've seen what indoctrination does. The Chinese and the Russian people, all the kids in schools like this, think the American people are terrible, we're the bad evils. We can see it going on in the Middle East right now with their children, we're not. So tonight I'd like you to stick with your vote on that flag resolution of no. Keep it no. You voted on it once, leave it that way. 8B1-9, no. 8B2-10, no. 8B3-11, yes. Thank you. I'll yield my time back. Uh, thank you. Um, I've got another one for James Lauder. Did you want to speak again? No, I thought it, when you divided it up, I wasn't sure if I needed to be okay. more specific. All right, thank you. Uh, Mark Lonergan. So I strongly believe in the First Amendment the right to free speech. And I also believe in protecting the rights of every student in this district, including persons who are members of the LGBTQ community. But the person or persons who are proposing this new flag resolution to be considered tonight have gotten it exactly backwards when they claim that the prior resolution constitutes a constitutional overreach and violates the rights to free speech. California's flag Code and Government Code 431 requires this in every school district to fly the U.S. flag and the California flag only. Uh, as this board already found in September, and as people have said repeatedly tonight, those two flags are inclusive of everyone in this nation, the state, and the district. There is absolutely nothing hateful or exclusionary about the board's decision to fly, not to fly other flags that represent only certain subgroups. I'm an Italian-American. That does not give me the right to insist that a public school fly an Italian flag or a flag of the Sons of Little Italy on school grounds. If it did, it would have to fly the flags of every subgroup that has. Persons who wish to speak out on behalf of members of the LGBTQ community or Italian-Americans or any other group are absolutely entitled to do that, but on their own time, in their own spaces, not on public property. The law has actually been well settled for a long time that school district employees have no legal rights to engage in political, political activities using district property and while at work, just like every other employee. This is clearly stated in California's Education Code, Section 7055. There was a court decision on this a long time ago, California Teachers Association versus the San Diego Unified School District. That case prevented student teachers from wearing political buttons while at school during school hours. Applies to Trump buttons too, for those who may care. <laughs> Further, in the Education Code, which is the law, Section 49091.12 prohibits public school districts from compelling students to affirm or disavow any particular political opinion or worldview. So using the Sonoma Glen Public School District to promote the rights or interests of the LGBTQ communities, no matter how justified, or Italian American, or any other group, would violate California state law and frankly create division where none should exist. I will send the board these legal authorities that show that the decision it made in September got it exactly right. Uh, thank you. And last one, uh, Debbie Ferrari. 
A person from Castro Valley trying to make a point does not speak for our elementary school kids and he doesn't care about our elementary school kids. A flag was flown in a meeting where person after person attacked and bullied Linda Hurley. This went on for a long time and that same flag was posted the next day. I believe it was a symbol to punish Linda Hurley and not to be not to include the children. People have been lied about many by Trustee Romo and others. I'd like to tell you about a few of them. James Louder, a citizen of our community, is one of several who's being called a bigot and been disparaged by Ted Romo. Over the last couple of years, James and his family have made multiple donations to the school, including cash, food, and equipment. He and his wife have spent time cooking, delivering, and setting up snacks for teachers. Linda Hurley, a former teacher herself, a nurse and a caring individual by every measure has been abused and deeply disparaged by Ted Romo and others since the day she joined as a board member. Linda, with two other moms, started the community club. I say that again. Linda is the one who started the community club. She also, one of those, she also helped to make sure that it received tax-exempt status. She did this for everyone. She spent 12 years as a room mother while her children attended some old Glen. She's helped with various charitable events. Our board president, Ryan Jurgensen, has also been called a bigot repeatedly, as well as being accused of ties to hate groups by Ted Romo, his wife, and others. Complete lies. Ryan has four children going to some old Glen. It'll soon be five. Ryan has spent many hours talking to contractors, architects, lawyers, educators, consultants, engineers, as board president to try to determine what's best for the school. His wife has volunteered in classrooms and in events many times. They attend school activities often and have made substantial donations to the school. If you have a question or a concern, sit down and talk to these board members with an open mind. Do not take anyone else's word for it. Don't lecture have an open com conversation. And finally, if you really care about our kids, go volunteer. Make sure one of each and every one of our 70s and old kids feel included. Encourage them related to sports, art, tutor them in science, etc. Don't come up with a false sense of inclusion that has nothing to do with the children or the school. Walk the walk, talk the talk and do the work one-on-one, -on -one, make sure each and every kid feels included. Thank you. Uh, that concludes the cards that we have. And I, uh, we're gonna have some comments and discussion by the board members. Um, yeah, uh, Linda, would you like to go ahead, or Ted, would you like to go ahead with any comments? Well, I don't know which one to comment. We've got three on them. Can I just start with the flag, since that's the first one? It's up to you. Okay, so I'm just going to read something I sent to Inform Sano, just part of it. Um, not everybody gets that, which is why I'm reading it here. <coughs> Excuse me. Has Mr. Romo and Mr. Davies themselves recognized the decisive issue in Shirtwick versus Boston was the fact that the city of Boston had no flag policy. So when challenged by Shirtwick for being refused to fly a Christian flag, the Supreme Court found in favor of Shirtliff 9 to 0 that his rights had been violated. Snow Glen Unified itself had no flag policy, and we thereby found ourselves open to legal action for flying the pride flag, which happened. Mr. Jurgensen asked our school district's attorney to draw up a policy that would protect our school from such legal action. That is the resolution we just approved on September 12th. It is correct that we could adopt a selective policy of flying only some flags and not others, or of flying everybody's flag. If only some flags, then members of other groups will rightly charge viewpoint discrimination. Mr. Romo suggested that we allow Superintendent Barnes to decide. And again, some would agree and others would disagree. Both outcomes represent slippery slopes to conflict, whereas the resolution to fly only our U.S. flag and state flag satisfies the requirement of our state constitution, and they are all inclusive, which got taken out of 
the informs know I had bolded it and underlined it to emphasize that it's all inclusive. This resolution is not pro any one group or anti any one group. My focus and concern has been and continues to be to protect our school. In this case, from costly legal action. Because we are small, we are more vulnerable to such actions. Then I ended with this. I left out the part that my dad fought in World War II and so forth. Our genuine concern for our children is what makes Sinopolis a cherished place to raise our children. I hope that the slandering, threatening, and stirring up of unnecessary hateful feelings can stop, that the community can return to the business of living in harmony with mutual respect. I believe, and again I speak for myself, but also feel many others in this community also believe, that the Sonoma Glen Unified School District Board must necessarily refocus its attention on the essential duty of promoting the excellent education of the school's children, the core subjects of math, reading, and writing, i.e. sticking to the basics. Also of urgent importance, and I think some of this stuff is meant to distract you from the managing and accounting for the community's money so that we make sure it's being spent wisely. To date, the board has not been given the amounts paid out to our contractors. I'm not even sure who's writing the checks. Thank you. I have one more thing, but that's later for the teachers and superintendent, what he wants to do with that. Should I talk on that or not? Let me like, just do the flag. Well, then there's three eight things. Yes, it is about any of those three? Yes, it's about um, oh, oh, the other resolution. Resolution yes, with regard to. Okay. Well, it would be nice sometimes to go last, Mr. Rollo. Sometimes I've gone first and then you discredit everything I've said. So it'd be kind of nice for you to take a knee and all of that. <laughs> Just a thought. Okay. Do you want to say anything, or you want to ask? Okay, this is with respect to the, the resolution um, to repeal in the matter of the slave district flags. Thank you. Uh, in the matter of the repeal of resolution number 2320-24-8, in the matter of the display of district flags and daily performance patriotic exercises, and the resolution of support the superintendent, teachers, and staff of Snowflake. So, as many of you know, these resolutions seek to achieve two things. One, to right the board's wrongs that have brought such extreme divisiveness and shame to and embarrassment on the district and the wider Snow community. And two, make clear the board's continued respect and support for the superintendent, the teachers, and staff of Snow Glen School, each of whom has worked tirelessly every day to bring the highest level of educational excellence to the students of the district. With respect to the flag ban resolution repeal and replacement, in light of the divisiveness that has been generated by and continues to this day as a result of the adoption of the flag ban resolution, the fact and the fact that the very adoption of the flag ban resolution did not even follow the board's own bylaw requirements for a new policy of the district, the resolution to repeal the September 12 resolution seeks to right the ship, to start fresh by taking up any consideration of the flag resolution by following the board's existing requirements for the adoption of the new policy. As you know, bylaw 9310, or called board policies, sets out the requirements for the district to develop a new or amended policy for the district. It requires a number of steps that shall be taken with respect to any new or amended policy before adoption by the board. This includes, among other things, the superintendent gathering fiscal data, staff and public input related district policies, sample policies from the California School Boards Association, other organizations or agencies, and other useful information and data fully inform the board about the particular issue. The proposed repeal resolution is a simple resolution. It repeals a flawed resolution adopted by the members of the board here back on September 12th, and then directs the superintendent in accordance with bylaw 9310 to gather public input, related district policies, if any, sample policies from the California School Boards Association and, uh, or other organizations or agencies, and other useful information and data to fully inform the board about any potential policy with respect to the display of flags on the district's flagpole, and to report back to the governing board accordingly, 
after which the government board may consider next steps in accordance with and subject to the terms of bylaw 9310. That includes, for example, holding public hearings to determine what the public feels about it. And in order to create a policy that is actually supported by the vast majority of the public, not one side or the other. It's reasonable or appropriate resolution that addresses the needs for a reset of the actions of the board, but also considering on a go forward basis a reasonable flag policy for the school, one based on and following the board's own bylaws for the creation of a new policy, rather than a slapdash approach to date, which has caused so much concern among teachers, staff, parents, and the greater small community. I'll defer to Linda on the next resolution with respect to. Well, that keeps putting me back in the after. You, you, I speak first, you speak after. This time you go first, then I'll go. Okay. With respect to the resolution in support of the student, superintendent, teachers, staff, and Snow Glenn, as a direct outflow of the division that has been sown by the flag down resolution, the second resolution before you in support of the superintendent, teachers, and staff of Snow Glenn is intended to make very clear and very public and confirm the board's continuing 100% support of the school's teachers, staff, and superintendent. I think everyone agrees that that's appropriate. Everyone has heard the concerns raised by the teachers and staff to the breach of trust that they have felt the board's actions have reflected today. As one of the leaders of the teachers noted at, last, at the last special meeting of the board on September 20th, the board continues to say basically, the board continues to break trust with the staff and community of Snow Glen. And based on the evidence they have seen, they are assuming that there are plans for staff changes at the school. The resolution before you today seeks to counter this and similar concerns. Assuming that the board actually does stand with the teacher, staff, and superintendent, and not as fear in opposition to them. And again, the resolution reflects what I believe are the Snow community's values kindness, inclusion, and a welcoming environment for all, rather than a uh, division and threat of retribution, which the actions of one or both of, of the members here have seemingly shown to date. That's the concern. As I noted to the Snow community more than a week ago, should either of these resolutions be voted down, I will suggest to you, to the community especially, there may be no other reasonable way to read this decision as other than a clear indication of the future direction of the members of the board here. One where we should not be surprised if when they seek to take other measures supported only by a minority, and one where they seek to silence opposition, whether voiced or otherwise, by taking actions retaliatory or otherwise, whether it be against the superintendent directly, the teachers and the staff indirectly, or members of the greater small community seeking to get the word out to the community of the errors of the board's ways. And I'm going to defer on to your resolution. Should I respond? Your resolution number 11. It's not my submitted to me. Why not? I can keep my contact close. Why? You want me to respond? It was from a few different people. Go ahead. Okay, so. I would suggest that the others have been alarmed because of the things you put Here on is. the things you've used social media to alarm people on, such as we were going to take disciplinary action toward the superintendent principal and then had all the media here and groups from all different cities coming to be there and support. There was no, I didn't know myself coming into this. I'm, I can tell you physically I was having reactions to the worry because you put it out there that this was going to happen. So if the teachers and the kids are alarmed, thank you, Mr. Romo, for putting that alarm out there on social media. Then to follow it up, we have, oh, we're going to fire a lawyer. We did not do either of those things, yet you stirred up our public with social media that you're not supposed to be doing as an elected board, board member, we're not supposed to be using social media to get out our message or to alarm people. Yet you did numerous times. Okay, having said that, now I'll say what I was going to say. I do not feel that giving a blanket accommodation to the teachers is nearly as effective to the um, excellence in teaching as it is to do something like a, a teaching and excellence award.
to be given to an outstanding teacher demonstrating achievement above and beyond the expected norms. Such an award could be a public-private partnership and funds for those for these rewards can be raised through parents and the community. We can formulate a list of achievements, perhaps with the community club input, that would signify excellence in teaching. The point I am making is that the educator that goes above and beyond should be the one that's recognized individually, not making a blanket statement here. Okay, having said that, I am also hearing that some employees are being pressured and shunned related to political involvement and what stance they take. I think we need to investigate this because it would fall into the category of harassment and is a poor example of inclusivity. This behavior will not be tolerated. So that's what I say to that. So you're saying you don't support all of the I don't support seven. this resolution. Of course I support the teachers. And we had in the superintendent, we have already done a review on her last spring, and we have another one scheduled this coming spring. We'll deal with it then. Right now, not supportive of the superintendent. right now is not a good time to ask me if I think she's done a really good job. So you're not supportive. That's clear. <laughs> That's clear. That's unfortunate because I think the superintendent does an excellent job. And I think it's unfortunate that you can take it. Can we stick with the resolution, please? I will read the resolution. Quiet, quiet, please. Okay. The resolution as such reads, whereas the governing board, oh, sorry, yeah. whereas the governing board of the Snow Glen Unified School District recognizes that its past actions together with the events at its regular meeting on September 12, 2023, and a special meeting on September 20, 2023, have raised concerns among the superintendent, teachers, and staff of the district, as well as among parents of students at Snow Glen School and in the greater Snow community. And whereas the board desired to formally address and reduce such concerns by adopting the following resolutions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the governing board hereby declares its full and active respect and support for and confidence in the superintendent, teachers, and staff of the district, each of whom has shown and continues to show incredible dedication and excellence for the benefits of all students of this district. Be it further resolved, the governing board recognizes and commends the proactive, thoughtful, and effective leadership of the superintendent in the management and operations of the district, and in particular, her placing the welfare and best interests of students first, while also continually being a respected, kind, and inclusive leader for an active role model to teachers, staff, and students of the district. Be it further resolved that the governing board looks forward to working with the superintendent and learning from both her experience and her past, present, and future leadership in the district. In particular, as each of the trustees continues to learn and come up to speed on many new issues and areas of K through 8 education. This is paralleling what we said in our most recent evaluation of her. It's no surprise. We don't have the experience that she has. And we should learn from her. So, should we talk about the last resolution? Okay, we can go with those two. So, did you write those two resolutions? I did. And did you write by the legal counsel? I did. Okay. Uh, he told me that did not. Well, he emailed me and asked uh, if it had been by a lawyer and said yes and that I'm a lawyer and I wrote it. Yeah. And he asked questions about the resolutions oh. and I answered those questions. Okay. So he clearly had read it okay. and reviewed it. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and take those two first. Uh, any other discussion on this? On nine or ten. I don't know. Okay. Any motion? So I'll motion to have passed both uh, the flag uh, repeal and replace uh, the repeal resolution and the support uh, and furtherance of uh, superintendent, teachers, and staff. Okay, and looking for a second. And no second, we will move on to B11. So resolution B11 is the furtherance of focus on the educational excellence of schools on the school. Um, some people have spoken about that from the community. Are there any comments from 
the board regarding this resolution 8B11. I, I will comment on it. <clears throat> so this resolution focuses on commonality, what all have in common. But well, we as a society to note what we all have in common, we as a society and governmental institutions like schools, more particularly, also celebrate what makes us and each of us unique. Take, for example, Christmas. If you follow the intention behind this resolution, only acknowledging what all students have in common, we should not, and the Snowbird School should not, recognize or allow for celebrations of Christmas. Since it is only for Christians, a particular day and event is meaningful. But in reality, we all, as a society, and Snow Glen in particular as an institution, do celebrate Christmas, as we do celebrate other events that are celebrations of certain other groups' uniqueness or aspects that are particularly meaningful for one group over another. For example, Indigenous Peoples Day yesterday, Juneteenth, and so on. While public schools serve all students, they also seek to meet the needs and differences of each student. Each student experiences the world in a unique way. Each student is different. Each student makes contributions to the classroom. Educators strive to meet the educational needs of each individual student in order to help students understand our collective past and promote critical thinking for engagement in a multicultural present and future. Recognizing diversity in public schools improves cultural awareness and helps students to develop compassion and understanding each of our differences. This is why we have a robust literary collection and inclusive history lessons and so on. Each student needs to be given the opportunity to see themselves as a valuable and worthy part of the community. This is why our educators at Snowblend are so much more than just teachers of reading, writing, and arithmetic. They are talented and experienced educational professionals who are able to navigate not just the basics of education, but teach in a way that is culturally responsive, anti-bias, anti-racist, and include historically excluded narratives. They teach and reach each child based on that child's different cultural background and style of learning. They exchange, or sorry, engage students in learning through sharing their differences and identifying what makes each student special and unique. Through a process of recognizing, celebrating, and emphasizing, Snow Glen students are able to discover their shared humanity and commonality. That is how you construct a public school for all students. The resolution instead only focuses on the common to the exclusion of what makes each student unique. This resolution suggests that only a homogeneous student body is acceptable. One that comes from the same background, the same skin color, the same religion, the same gender identity rules, the same culture, and believes in the same ideologies. It suggests that schools should not recognize differences or support diversity in the student body. Relative to Snow Glenn, the resolution effectively reads that, for example, the LGBTQ plus community will be identified as an agenda outside the common and therefore not tolerated. Given this, I suggest that you, um, to you that this resolution misses the mark by focusing only on the all and not also on the individual as well. At the same time, I'm at a loss for understanding what the operative language in the resolution is really trying to say. Let me read it to you. It says, the board reaffirms the principles, purposes, and efforts of the district to support the school community and the community of school for all students. The term reaffirm means to confirm the correctness of or to assert again. So is the resolution stating that the board is confirming the correctness of its own principles, purposes, and efforts? In other words, the resolution is effectively a congratulatory statement by the board about itself? Or is the resolution trying to confirm the correctness of the principles, purposes, and efforts of the teacher, staff, and superintendent to support the school community? What does it really mean to reaffirm the principles, purposes, and efforts of the district to support the community of Sunol? For all students. It's simply unclear. As such, I suggest that the proposed resolution be withdrawn and rewritten to be clear as to what it is really trying to say. Uh, I don't think it was run by our legal. Um, so my comment on this is, uh, yes, this was submitted by someone in the community, uh, just as yours were written 
uh, and submitted by you from the community and as a board member. Um, and yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, and uh, as the old saying goes, uh, it takes a lawyer to uh, make things confusing when it's pretty straightforward. But um, yeah, the resolution is what it is. I have no other comments on it. So, um, Linda, you have no comments? No, I'm sorry. And is there any motion on this uh, resolution? Okay. What's the secrecy behind the author? I'm, I'm sorry, if you're going to interrupt, we're going to have you removed from the room. So, um, we are on 8B. Uh, we have no motion for 8B11. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to 8C, public records update possible action. I don't know who wanted that. Did you want to put that on there? Okay. Yeah, Anyone want to say that? Okay. So I was the one that asked this be included on our agenda, and it is because of a concern of missing public records. And specifically, well, actually, um, the recorded board meetings have been altered or corrupted since 1222, but missing board meetings from last year include January, February, April, May, and November. And this came glaringly to my attention by a letter that was sent to the board, and I don't think Molly was on that one, but the three board members um, were approached, were emailed by the law offices of Jason Bezis. I do not know, nor have I met or spoken to this individual, but he sent a letter um, asking, he's the lawyer for ACTA, the Alameda County Taxpayers Association, asking for a PRA, a Public Records Act, to um, obtain the April 2022 meeting that is not up there. And I know somebody with ACTA, um, they have said the reason may be that um, it has pertinent information with regard to the bond. So I do not know what's, what's in that particular meeting that was taken off, but we have a very sporadic uh, representation on our website of those months. All right, having said that, I have found on my own. Mr. Gabell, answer to that? Sure. Uh, sorry, it, would it be okay to talk to legal really quick because it was a CPRA and I am uh, was working with a lawyer with that particular CPRA. Okay. Um, so I don't know if I can comment on it. Uh, so I'm not working directly on the CPRA. Has it yeah. been responded to yet? Do we know? I can I respond to a to a conversation between me and uh, the district lawyer? No, that yeah. would be an attorney client privilege. Yep. So you so, should not be. OK, maybe you can answer this one. though. I found this on my own. And, okay. and as I said, this was I don't want to say it was alarming, but certainly surprising. Mm -hmm. um, but I found on my uh, own. Would, would you like me to? I, I'm sorry, Trustee Hurley. Would you like me to be on the microphone so everyone can hear me properly? Well, in a minute. Oh, okay. okay. So, uh, the April meeting of this year, I found that certain minutes were missing. And I talked to okay. you about it, yes. right? And I said, Where do we store these things? And you told me it was on YouTube. So, I went to YouTube to look for that specific time, which I can actually tell you was specifically three hours, 32 minutes, and 47 seconds into our uh, recorded board meeting. Mm -hmm. Then it goes silent, it fr freezes, within a second, it up pops your picture and it says we're in closed session. We did not have any closed session at mm -hmm. that point in time at the closing of our board meeting. This was during closing comments. I'm fully aware what took place during that time. Mm -hmm. It is sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, other people in the audience can verify and bear witness to what happened there at that time. And it continues not to let you see anything until three hours, 35 minutes, and 15 seconds. So approximately two and a half minutes are lost. Mm -hmm. And um, because of that, I'm very concerned. And it's not just that. I'm finding little bits and pieces in different um, other meetings. 
Mm -hmm. I, I can be more specific, but right now I just want to say it's very suspicious. I want to know if you've edited anything. Have you gone in and edited anything on our board meetings? Um, Trustee Hurley, at the moment, it I would like to say that I will take a look at those videos. And if you may send me an email with my superintendent on it, I can investigate it further. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to ask that we investigate it as well. That is going to be my motion. Um, I would, I'll, I'll come to one other thing in a minute, but I would like to move that we hire an independent IT expert to formally investigate the recorded meetings of our public records to determine what was changed and who has altered them because there's always an, an, an identifying thing that will tell them who went in and did that. So can uh, I that that motion item and have this vote on it? Do you want to discuss this? Um, all of these are videos, right? Recordings? They are public records uh, of our meetings. Of videos and recordings. Yes. Okay, so our bylaws provide in 9324 minutes of recording it says any additional recording may be erased for 30 days after the meeting so okay. it's, if they've been destroyed or erased that would be in compliance with this so if they're still available great but if they're gone i would like gone. to find out if they're still available i don't see why we they have a but just so we're clear though this is saying basically that even if someone went went hog wild racing things and stuff like that. That it's their right? Well, it says the district court of your race are destroyed three days after. You don't have any concerns that we might be? Well, I think the official records are the minutes. It was erased before 30 days. I don't know. I don't know when it was erased, but. Well, well let's find out. How about, how about we talk with our IT department, talk with our legal counsel, and investigate a little bit more and the uh, we well, how will he be represented? Because as staff members, we're feeling a little bit of pressure as well. Yeah. So, so well, we, some of these things weren't in the minutes either that should have been. And, and I know that so I know I that's hard to do. My mom was actually in part time a court reporter, and it's very difficult, even with the shorthand and the machines that they use, yes. to get everything. And it's not uncommon for a court reporter to, to stop. step down from taking these names. I, I, <laughs> I bet you are. But, okay, but if something took place in two and a half minutes that was sensitive and maybe pertinent to something important, wouldn't you want to have a record of those? And we did have a record of those, and yet they disappeared. So, so again, Recordings and video can be destroyed after 30 days. Minutes are and summary. you're hearing that they were destroyed before 30 days. I did not say that, no, Trustee no, Hurley. I didn't say that. One of the audience did. Okay, so, so, and there are people who were there that can bear testimony, witness to what took place. And I'm concerned that we have Excuse a cover-up. So before we move on, I also want to make an additional motion that we have board meetings sent immediately after each meeting directly to our emails for our perusal so we can make sure that the, this kind of thing doesn't happen. Can we agree on that? You don't want the truth out there. <laughs> so I'm happy with it. I, I think people see what they look like. So as far as I understand, currently they're being recorded straight to YouTube, and they're posted, and, they're posted and they are not kept on site or altered in any way. Let's do some, some talking with the IT department. Let's do some research into the past meetings, the current protocol, before we start trying to change our policies. But let's do some research. I know Linda, Ted, myself, we can't talk offline other than in these meetings, which makes it quite difficult for the public. Sorry, a lot of boards have five or more members and there can be discussion outside of the meeting. We can't. So you get to see the only time we get to talk. It can be a little messy. So there's one more thing. Yeah. There was footage of whoever did the hate crime of taking the banner off the fence. And I asked President uh, Superintendent Barnes 
don't we have cameras? And she said, yes. And I said, well, can't we say? She goes, well, it was dark and we couldn't tell who it was. I'd really like to see that footage. And I know that the police department can enhance that footage. Do you still have that footage? That would I, I, I've been I, I asked trust, by members of the community, have we done anything uh, trust about this? I, I'm so sorry, Trustee Early, to interrupt you, but uh, to my understanding, I am underneath the purview of the superintendent. I would love to uh, investigate all your concerns and try to find remedies for any issues that you have uh, talked about today. I would um, love Mr. to... Hoxie, yeah, um, I would. I would also offer, this is actually not an item on the agenda, but as President Jurgensen has suggested, it's something that the staff can look into um, for for future comment and, and investigation. But this particular item, footage of what may have happened to the flag, is not an agenda item and wouldn't be proper for a conversation today. Okay. All right. So let's let's look into that. Thank you for bringing those things to our attention. Uh, any other comments on HC? Just a moment. Okay, I have no comments on that, but yes, we, we can look into that. Uh, 8D, we do have uh, public comment. 8D is discussion of the addition of addition of members for the Bond Oversight Committee. We have two, three, three uh, public comments. We'll go ahead with uh, no, no, no. We'll go ahead with uh, March Court. Sorry, uh, sorry, one second. I have to change it to 20 minutes. Oh, thank you. No problem. I don't think we'll go over with our three people, so we should be safe. Okay. Hey, thank you much. Go ahead. Um, um, I wanted to talk about transparency and accountability. One of the things I noticed that when the bond measure was passed, um, measure J, um, there was a lot of questions that were asked, and now that it's passed, I would really like to see additional members um, who were the opposing side of the bond. Uh, there's none of that present right now on the Oversight Committee. Um, I believe, and I might be wrong, that they were all in Cape Guatemala, Barnes, and so I'd like to see a, a representation of the other part of the community. We've got quite a large community here, I think. I mean, it's small, but I mean, uh, when you only have one side that on the oversight, I think that disturbs me. And so I would like to see, and I would like to request that the board add on an additional six people on the oversight committee with a possibility of more in addition in the future to make it even. Um, you know, so that's how I can say. Okay, thank you. Chris Bovers. Your time's a charm. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have to say, my name is Chris Bogertz. I'm an old and a parent, and uh, I am speaking on behalf of myself. I'm not representing the oversight committee whatsoever. Nobody knows that I'm doing this. Well, no. um, I would like to reference uh, that I spoke on this topic at the 912 board meeting in opposition of adding alternates. At that time, alternates, but still additional members regardless. Uh, let me reiterate, the added members to the Bond Oversight Committee will not change the way in which the Oversight Committee operates. The bylaws that govern the bond, bond Oversight Committee are written in a way that Oversight Committee has no power in regards to how money is spent or not spent, for that matter. I just, uh, a decision to add additional members to the Bond Oversight Committee would be another misuse of resources. The action to add additional members would require staff and administration to reinitiate the application process, collect and evaluate applications for selection, produce and provide the CBOC materials, binder of training materials and resources, but uh, still to be considered nonetheless, and provide the same training as was provided to the original selected committee. Should that not be the process expected to use to select additional member, then I would question who then and what is the motive. I would also like to state um, that you're more than welcome to come to the next meeting. We will be there. And it is open, just like this meeting. Um, so 
So please, I invite you. It will be the most boring meeting. It will be much more boring than this. And uh, I, I assume, I'm saying I'm assuming because I'm, I'm talking on behalf of myself, we will be looking at expenditures and uh, where they went and making sure that they were uh, spent on the things that they were supposed to be spent on. So that is what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and what's the plug? When's the meeting in case people want to be bored? It is uh, What's this? November 28th, I believe. All right, put it on your calendars. Thanks for time. Great. All right. Uh, sorry, this turned out a little fun. And Mickey, thanks for your joke and making us all laugh earlier. Uh, we don't want you to step down. We appreciate what you do. Uh, Rod Zeiss. Sorry, you already knew it was you. Three people, last one. You're good with your hand. Okay, so we're talking about the oversight committee. And I keep in there's no power that you're on it by some people. If you really don't think there's any power, then step down. If you're on an oversight committee for measure J and you don't think it has any power, step down. Let someone else who thinks that it's important to do it and has power. The power is actually making sure everyone knows what's going on. I can look, I look today on the members. I can tell you straight across, except for two people, exactly how they voted. And what I've been asking for is make sure there's people. And I don't care if they're left or right, but someone is going to be fair, honest, and open. That's what matters to me. That's what I've been pushing for a long time. When this first started, when this first started, I was going after this board. I had Linda Hurley. She agreed, yes, we should have our insight. More people. Ryan Jurgis at the time, he was against it. Rommel, against it. Maureen, against it. I kept on coming over and over to the meetings. And I kept on talking to them. And one day I looked at the board and I said, why not allow more people to be on the oversight committee? It does you no harm, it affects you at all. And it gives you an opportunity to say, look, we're being transparent. Like Molly says, she likes stuff. And Ryan comes back and goes, who do you recommend? And at that point, I realized that he's realizing that there was a good point and he changed his mind. So my point of view on this is to all the board members, and everyone in here is that do not think they're locked in. They are willing to listen, but you have to be able to prove a good point. And if you're wrong and they don't agree with you, they're going to go with the way they think, but they are willing to listen to you. Ryan and I have gone to battle. But right now, and I've been, following, I've been with him, talking with him, he's clicked in. We always agree it's fine. Okay? We don't always get along. Most importantly is the committee is basically telling us what's going on. And I and when I hear someone says it has no power to step down. Simple. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that concludes public comment on 8D. One thing, that was my personal opinion. Get out of here. Okay. Uh, any Comment from board members on the request from the community, and there's been a number of them. Irene, who walked away, um, Martin, who walks home actually, had a petition of I don't even know how many. She had at least 20 some people on her petition, and then was told by somebody to stop getting the signatures. But there's a lot of people who wanted to see more people on the board, the bond oversight committee. So the request from the community is that there be representation from the whole Spoonville community, not just handpicked people to be on the bond oversight committee. We would like to admit or add six full-fledged or at-large BOC members to the existing board. And the thought was that we would include the two alternates that are already on the board that Molly has already given her okay on for um, becoming full-fledged members. So that's my motion. I move that we add six additional at-large members to the bond oversight committee. And I will pay for the training 
of the new people. There's a KBOC training session that, that cost a hundred bucks for several of them all paid for them. I'm not sure how much. Maybe you want to yeah. It says just, just in case. <laughs> it'll not it'll even. cover up to fifteen people or something like that. So it should cover everything. Okay. Can I can I just ask a question? How many people is this? Is it is it gonna say I had you vote? Uh no. Well two people got turned down out of the last process. One of them was Tom McManus, who was a contractor who would have been very helpful in the final analysis of things and might even give some good useful advice to how we're moving forward with contractor related stuff. One person was um, Bill Falk, he's already on there as an alternate. He spent 24 years on the Milpitas school board and, would, and has been through the building process and he would have a lot to offer. Um, another person that did not get accepted but tried but because he was in New Orleans was Tim Copeland and was told he had to bring it into the office. He was not given the option that somebody else, and this was from Maline, was given to uh, fax it in from wherever they were at. They couldn't get that electronic application in either. And so that person was given that option. Tim Copeland was not. So that would be another person I would want to ensure. So, so, so you you would pick them. Is that what I'm hearing correct? You would I think them. that we as a board can pick them. This time, let's not have Molly take her first picks. How about if we as a board pick them? Well, just so clear, we did pick them because. Two yeah, you voted on what she were you rubber stamped what Molly okay. chose. That's how we didn't so even so have perfect. access to these applicants. So until moments before we were to come in and vote on them, breaking the Brown Act. You want us to vote again on your picks? On the ones that are willing to come in and put in their application. Okay, so so the so the method here will be if we agree with this, you'll have you'll lay out for us why we have to pick the ones that you know. No, I think we can and we can we'll put it on again. How, how about this? How about we have a neutral party? Maybe someone at the school, or if some of the school is too busy, I can volunteer to accept the applications. We, as a board, can have a meeting where we all look over them, and we can choose members. Okay. Would, would that would that kind of work? That would work for okay. me. Okay. So, so the it sounds like the the added word for the staff would be like when uh, you put it on the website before the application and had it turned in. That would be the added work. I don't know how to put it on the school's website. I don't have credentials or uh, ability to do that. So we can put the notice on the website, put the application on the website, how to turn it in. Um, we can make electronic available. It could be emailed to my district email and and or copied with Mickey. Uh, make sure there's oversight, whatever uh, will make people happy. Or hard copies turned into Mickey's office. Thank, thank you if you're willing to collect them and hand them over, then we could have a meeting and look over them. Does that does that sound like something that could be done to with the board? Um, <clears throat> so just so I'm clear on this, so the idea is that we will post and say that there is another round of applications for additional six slots on the number six. <laughs> that's, that's what you said. Okay. Does that include the two alternates having an option? Yes, two? So, so, so four. So, okay. yes. I think the idea to be fair would be to say that you have it open to the public. Anybody yeah. who wants everybody, anybody, everybody can apply. You know, they, basically anybody can apply, and then those applications will be submitted. Will we, as a board, will look at all of those applications and decide on who? That would be refreshing. Be. And because we, we didn't get to do that last. Are time. we going to have on the application though? How did you vote on the bond as a test question, no. or is that secret? How, how about we just? Keep the application the same as last time. Okay, I'm fine with that, but I, I just want to address Linda's desire to would, pack it with people who are against the bond. So, would, would it work for how you to do that? Uh, I don't think those were her words, um, but how about we just keep the application the same? And so, the two alternate people, if they don't want to be on the board, if they want to still remain alternates, they can choose to do that. If okay. they want to try to apply, and maybe we amend your motion to be something like up to six members. Okay. 
So if we only get three applications, we can look over them and decide to accept, or there may be a reason to reject one of those for some disqualified reason, but I don't foresee what that would be, but okay. So would you like to make a motion or do you want me to say it? You want to say it? Okay. So uh, let me know if this is getting the spirit of what you're thinking. Uh, you would like to make a motion, we would make a motion to add six members, up to six members, to the Bond Oversight Committee with the ability of the alternates and up to four others to have the opportunity to apply. And we as a board will review those applications to uh, up to six members added to the Bond Oversight Committee. Legal, does that make sense? Mr. Turf? Yeah, the only thing I would say in there is you said have up to four apply. I think have up to four selected would be more appropriate. Language. Up to oh, six oh, yeah, selected. Yeah. Up to six selected, yeah. But I yeah. think the language, if yeah. I heard it correctly, was up to four selected. So the motion apply. is up to six selected, the alternates and others up to six can apply. So the alternates are selected. reapplying to be on it? If they would yes, like to. Gotcha. If they would like to be full members, up to six can be selected to be anyone added. can apply and anyone can apply okay and up to six anyone from the community can apply up to six can be re uh, selected by the board after review to be added to the bond oversight committee Does that get this? okay do we have a so second I, I made a motion do we have a second okay uh all in favor did you capture the motion do you want to read it back just to make sure we have it no, not We're really, because I'm going to use the video. <laughs> okay. But the video is okay. obviously video. wrong. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, and all in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. That passes uh, unanimously. 8B. Now on to 8, 8E, the approval of RFQRP for legal services for the districts. We have one uh, community comments on this one, Mr. Chris Roberts. I'm getting some mic time tonight, thanks. Uh, let's see, uh, my name is Chris Roberts. I'm a, a parent and I live in Snow. And uh, a couple of items from the RFP I would like to address under, uh, and maybe these are things that you can help with, I'm not sure. But, uh, under notice of request for qualifications, proposals, and legal services, second paragraph, the district reserves the right to reject any or all pr proposals and to waive any errors or corrections in proposal, any proposal or in the proposal process. So waive any errors or corrections in a proposal. This is a broad stroke statement which would allow any error or correction to be overlooked from my take. I, I believe the standard process would include requesting error or correction and an updated proposal. I would expect a section in regards to erasure. I, I would expect a section in regards to quote erasures and corrections unquote and wording that may be similar to quote proposals submitted must not contain any erasures, interlineations, or other corrections unless each correction is suitably authenticated by affixing in the margin immediately opposite such the measure and surnames of the persons signing the proposal end quote that's one additionally under section five well the second section of the section uh, second section five because i believe there's an error in the rfp itself which uh, this should be section six um there's, there's duplicates there as there are two sections of the fives uh, in any case under selection criteria Legal services, oh, sorry, well, legal services may be invited to present their qualifications and respond to questions from panel members. The panel may include, but will not be limited to, Board of Education members, the superintendent, cabinet members, and others qualified, uh, other qualified rate providers. By these uncertain terms, I would suggest that I am qualified to rate as I have professional experience offering requests for proposals for service and have rated proposals for service as such. I would suggest this should be specific in nature and the expectation expectations outlined accordingly in the RFP. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, any comments from board members on this item? 
Yeah. So and this may be actually direct for the first part. Um, we, we get it right. Yeah. So we thought, what are the proposal forms included here? Um, uh, it, it refers to on um, in section three under the instructions proposals that are not submitted on the proposal forms included here. And what are the proposal forms? Are there forms? You know, so I have to apologize on that. Somebody did already point out that there's two item number fives on there. This probably should have had a little bit closer proofreading the proposal forms. And there's also, as you pointed out prior to the meeting, reference to cabinet members. Um, this, this RFP was adapted from an RFP that was used for a larger school district in which those applied and they should have been caught in there. So to the extent that the board would like to, you, you could adopt this with edits and revisions. You also have the option to have to send it back and bring it to another meeting for um, adoption after revisions have been made. You have the options on both, but but I own that. So well, I, my apologies. We can decide that in a minute, but I just want to make sure. So, so basically there wouldn't be any real forms. It's just there. To no, unless you choose to. You could right. choose you could to have, have those, but as this is drafted, correct. Right. But I think conceptually what I would expect to happen is law firms would send in their letter and a pitch deck basically to the school district to say, here's what we do, and this is why you should hire us. Like, most other, you know, basically, correct. Um, processes are done for hiring firms and stuff like that. Okay. Correct, so and that's, some of that is included under sure. the each and that would address other some, five contents of proposal. Right, and that would cover off the issue with respect to like what Chris Bogus was talking about, about like erasure and all this other stuff. Because that's all on the presumption you're throwing out a form that has, you know, that's inked and stuff like that. Correct. So all of that would come out. You wouldn't have to really worry about. Correct. From structures. Okay, so that's one. Uh, and then on the panel that's proposed here, again, recognizing that the panel is the board, I would imagine, and the, and the superintendent, that's the panel that's going to be reviewing this. In selection criteria, I, I would assume that this would be restructured to basically say that that the, that the, the application, or sorry, the, the um, RFP, RFQs that come in, uh, in or the responses to it, I should say will be reviewed by the board and the board will then go through the pitch decks and materials and then maybe select a few that have actually come in and do interviews and so forth like that and then make a decision based on that so it would be i would imagine a series of, of maybe two board meetings in order to get there um if assuming that the, the timeline is followed is that, is that conceptually what conceptually yeah that's, that's right that's yeah. what we're trying to do here okay so I would think that maybe the thing to do, I, I personally, you know, if, if this is what we want to do, I think that you would want to have the, the proposal or the RFP, RFQ revised, reflect what you're actually going to do as opposed to kind of, it's, because it, if you go out of this, it's kind of a mess. Um, and so it would be better to fix it and then get it approved and send it out. Is that... Is that process as he described it be normal? Is that required? Is there any other process for it? We'd be happy to make edits and any amendments in terms of the RFP. So it it is what the board wants and what the district wants as it's going out, because certainly you want it to be accurate. In terms of a specific process for the RFP RFQ, there aren't some RFP RFQs do require have language limiting edits and limitations, right? Some say if you submit something with errors, we'll reject that. You do have a certain amount of latitude and freedom in that. Um, technically, under the law, you are not required to have an RFP, RFQ by statute to select an attorney. However, your bylaws do state that you will. Um, and so I would recommend that you follow your bylaws. So you have, you have flexibility here um, in how you wanna go forward with this. And like I said, we'd be happy to to take your edits and consideration and put this back into a resubmit as a different draft for you um, to review, or you can make a motion to approve with edits and revisions now. That gets a little bit complicated to make such a motion um, on the fly. So it's it's up to the board on how they want to proceed on this. And my recommendation is if you're gonna go forward with this, that, that you go back, simplify it down, make it actually tied to what, what will really happen here, which is 
we're not submitting, we're not having them fill out specific forms. We're, we don't really care whether or not you know they submit things with errors. Um, you know, ideally they won't, but if they have errors, we'll see it and then we'll consider that as part of the judgment of whether or not you hire a particular firm. I mean, just telling of a firm if they submit stuff with errors in it, then you know they don't have to hire them. So from that standpoint, a lot of the verbiage here can come out to basically reflect the construct that you put out a request, they submit their pitch decks, the board then considers them, calls a few in to review in person, and then makes a decision. Is it normal to be calling them in for interview, visit, that sort of thing? Or are it, it's it's something that's done to say it's normal or not is so really sometimes it's done, but it's absolutely something that can be done. One hundred percent. Okay, it's not always done. Not always. But it can be done. Can be done. Okay. So I motion that we make these uh, minor edits and revisions to RFP RQ and send it off to uh, the law firms that work in this field. Could you be specific as to which the minor edits and revisions oh, I, are? I, so the the ones regarding uh, like the section five being on there twice, <coughs> the uh, the edits the uh, that uh, Mr. Boberts and Mr. Romo were talking about. Um, I don't think we need to put language in there specifically about very specific about uh, you know whether or not or how many people are going to be invited in for an interview. <coughs> Um, but let's get the proposals in, look at them, discuss them as a board, and then make decisions from there how we feel like we should go. So the selection criteria section needs to be revised to reflect the panel as the board and the superintendent. Does it not specify that? No, it includes the cabinet members. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah. Um, others qualified to rate providers. That could yeah. be, again, so those Chris point out anyway. Yeah, so the, the board and the superintendent. Okay, so your motion is to adopt the correction of the section five so that there's they're correctly numbered yep. and that the selection panel is changed to be the board and the superintendent. Correct. That is the motion. And then wait, but you still need to take out in section three A the reference to forms and so forth, and then you need to also correct to remove any of the language that talks about errors, deletions, uh, erasures, um, and so forth, because it's not relevant. Okay. Okay. So the motion then would be to adopt the RFP with the correction of the numbering. Changing the selection panel, clarifying the selection panel to be only the board and the superintendent. Yeah. Removal of item 3A yeah. in reference to the forms and removal of any language regarding rejection on errors, deletions, or erasures. Yes. Okay. That works. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And carries. 8A. Uh, we'll move on to uh, 9E consent items. Uh, on nine, we'll take all these together, but uh, there will be some discussion. Yes, uh, so approval of minutes on September 12, 2023. Minutes um, typically are kept uh, by the secretary, uh, which is the superintendent. She has Nikki helping with the minutes, as far as I understand. And on the original minutes that were submitted to me, Ted, did you have input on those? So, so I think that. Um, for purposes of agenda item nine, I think we do we need to motion to move out and consider separately uh, the uh, nine uh, a nine one a um, because I think we need to go through the differences in the two drafts of the September twelfth minutes. Did you have input on the original version? I, I commented on them as well. Yes. With the superintendent. Uh, with uh, Mickey and the superintendent. Okay. So you were involved in the minutes when I requested them. <clears throat> when I have no idea you when you requested them. Okay. Respectively, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think Trustee Romo is correct that this is listed as a consent agenda item. And so if you want to go into discussion about this, there should be a motion made to, to make okay. item a 9A1, a separate standalone item for discussion and vote. So that okay. you can proceed we, with the rest of the consent agenda. We will, we will not discuss. 
Um, I make a motion that we approve the amended September 12, 2023 minutes uh, that had uh, RJ at the end, Romeo and Juliet, um, for September 12, 2023, just 9A1. So, I'm sorry, so you're saying you want to just uh, consent all, all the, the consent items? Sorry. No, to 9A1, September 12, 2023 minutes amended. According to the ones that I amended and posted the agenda, okay. So I motion that we approve those. I think, minutes. I think we need to talk about them because they've got errors in it. I can, there are two blatant errors in it, and I can put that out to you now, or you can see it after. Um, so you're missing dollar amounts, and you're missing actually the resolution. We're, we're not having a discussion about that. Okay. But Separate and apart from the discussion piece of this, as as consent items go, you would be the motion would be to adopt the consent items that are on here. Mm -hmm. If you're going to adopt consent items as written, you'd be adopting both of these sets of minutes. Can't adopt this so one. no, you would have to okay. make a motion to separate out this item so okay. that you could adopt one so, or the uh, other. Let's make a motion to separate out nine A one to be nine A one. Uh, Roman numeral I and Roman numeral II would be for the amended ones that I amended with RJ at the end. Is that sufficient, Mr. Turk? If I make a motion to separate it out in that fashion, make that separate from the consent items? Yeah, you yeah. can do that. Okay. Uh, so, separate it out as a separate from the consent items uh, for those minutes. That is my motion. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. So it's separated out. You have to vote and to. All in favor? Aye. Separating out and then discussing that. Join sure. anyone? Sure. Okay. All right. And did you have comments on that amended uh, minutes? Okay. So on the minutes, for September 12th, as the public knows, there are two versions posted. The first was by the Secretary of the Board, and the second was the redraft that Ryan did. So here are the differences, and we can walk through them. Item 5, approval of the agenda. The original version included the statement, Mr. Jurgensen ignored the demand for a vote on the action to strike, and then moved to accept the agenda as written. He rewrote that to say, the chair, Mr. Jurgensen, reminded that there was a prior motion before the board and of the motion to accept the agenda as written. Item 7D, this is a superintendent's report. Your version, Ryan, removed the dollar value of the donation from Martin Marietta Quarry and just left a dollar sign. So I don't know why you did that, but that may be something that might be corrected. I don't know. Okay. The section, the same superintendent's report included in the original version, the following. Superintendent Barnes introduced staff representatives to address the board. However, Mr. Jurgensen stated that the staff could only speak during community comments on a particular agenda item or generally, and not as part of the superintendent's report, notwithstanding the advice of the district's legal counsel that the superintendent could, in fact, include staff comments as part of her superintendent's report. That was struck by Ryan's version and replaced with. Superintendent Barnes introduced staff representatives to address the board reading a letter regarding a resolution further down on the agenda. However, the chair, Mr. Jurgensen, stated that the staff would be welcome to speak on that agenda item during community comments on a particular agenda item, and that item is before the board for discussion or generally and not as part of the superintendent's report. Item 9, 9L, report discussion of possible action to occur resolution 23 2024 08 in the matter of the display of district flags and daily performance of patriotic exercise. The original version stated community comments were made for and against the resolution. The board president ordered the sheriff's deputies present to clear the room due to disruptions from certain audience members, notwithstanding the board's bylaw 9323, providing that only the board itself may take such action. Following Mr. Jurgensen's determination not to allow non-disruptive non audience members to be allowed to return to the public meeting, the board discussed the item. Motion to approve by Mr. Jurgensen. Mrs. Shirley seconded. The motion passed with Mr. Jurgensen and Mrs. Shirley voting in favor and Mr. Rimmer voting against. Your version said, 
Community comments were made for and against the resolution for about 19 minutes. At that point, there were many individuals and groups disrupting, shouting over community speakers and board members. After many, many requests for quiet, order, and civil discussion, the board president asked the disrupting parties to leave and requested the sheriff's deputies present to first escort out the offenders. They left and the audience continued as before and the chair said the board would be clear in the room. One last clarifying request was made by the chair for order or the room would need to be cleared entirely in addition to the individuals that left. After that clarification, while the board was beginning to discuss again with the audience in attendance, there were two individuals that spoke up over the board members. It was then direction that the board would clear the room due to disruptions from certain audience members to the public meeting the board discussed the item. Mr. Roma suggested the board needed to vote on clearing the room. The motion to approve the clearing of the room by Mr. Jurgensen, Mrs. Hurley seconded. The motion passed with Mr. Jurgensen and Mrs. Hurley voting in favor and Mr. Roma voting against. So the problem with this last couple sentences is it says, uh, just to be very clear, that the only thing that was voted on was the motion to approve the clearing of the room. It doesn't talk about the motion to actually approve the resolution. That's missing from this. Your revision left that out. So that's one. Um, the second part is that your version um, left out the fact that the ordering of the sheriff's deputies to clear the room was on your own and not after a vote of the board as required by bylaw 9323 meeting conduct. And <clears throat> the board. Uh, could not prohibit non disruptive members of the public from returning to the meeting without the board taking such action. That was what that was the vote that was at issue here uh, as well. That you and, and Linda took, which was to vote to bar non disruptive members of the community from re entering the public meeting. My understanding, since I was there, was that. So, I think that given that, I was moved to have the secretary further revise the minutes to reflect what happened at the meeting on September 12th, and then resubmit the meeting minutes for approval at the next board meeting. Nope. Uh, we have a motion from Mr. Rowan. Do we have a second? Okay, we have no second. Um, I motion that with these amended minutes, we amend them further to put the dollar amount back in. Sorry about the typo. Thanks for catching that. And uh, to include in there also the motion on the flyer resolution, we can put that in there. That was uh, neglected. I apologize for that typo as well. And we'll record the uh, results of that motion uh, on there as well. And with those uh, amendments to the amended agenda, I move that we accept these amendments. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Now we'll move back to September 12, 2023 meeting minutes, the original ones that were not. Uh, Taken out of the consent items, the original minutes. Do we have any motion on that one? Okay. Uh, no motion. We'll move on to the uh, consent item 9A2, September 20th, 2023, special board meeting minutes. I motion that we approve the September 20th, 2023, special board meeting minutes. So for the remaining items on the consent, a single motion yeah. for single approval motion of the consent. Correct. Okay. That's how consent works. The remaining items, except for 9A1, for either one, uh, just for 9A2, 9B1, 9C, and 9D, I move that we uh, consent those items. That's fine, but I didn't want to know what this $5,475 would have to Mr. Hamilton. Let's let's uh, let's look into that with the uh, administration. Okay. Okay. You second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, uh, item ten. Calendar. November. No meeting. December 12, twenty twenty three. January 9, twenty twenty four. I motion to approve the calendar. 
All in favor? Okay, great. Now, just for uh, everyone's information, that is our calendar and agenda item 11, future agenda items. I'm not made aware of anything from the public, uh, but we do have one community comment from Chris Boberts who wants to speak on item 11. <laughs> I'm just trying to get all the air time today. That's all about, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, I'm not doing it. This is me, myself, whatever. Um, I, I would like to request the future agenda items be removed from future agendas. <laughs> As stated, upon research, this is not a common practice to replay. Let me go back a little bit. 8 1, it's an old land board meeting under agenda item K future agenda items without context available in the agenda posted. Four people spoke regarding the same topic with almost word-for-word -word comments. If you look at the video, I'm not trying to point fingers or argue or anything, that's just the best fact. There are processes in place to submit items on the agenda, and I suggest that we stick to these. That was all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything from Trustee Omar or Trustee Herb? I'd agree with um, Chris Bowers' comment. In the future, and I, okay. There's no need to vote on it because it's not set up. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, 12 in closing comments from uh, board members. I am. Okay. I want to remind the Snow community of what we've seen here today. It's a continuation of a disturbing pattern where the members of the board have focused, sorry, have forced through or in the process forced through their unpopular and divisive agenda from the flag on resolution to the likely replacement of the district's long standing regional council. And as I've said time and again, don't be surprised if you see, soon see an action to remove the district's beloved and wildly popular superintendent for ultimately standing up for to the wrong-headed actions of this board and for what is right for students, teachers, staff, and the small community. If you step back and consider all of this more holistically, you'll see that all of this really began with the, <clears throat> the two conservative members of the board ignoring the will and desires of the majority of the parents, the students, and the small community, and instead began taking steps to implement their conservative agenda, whether the community asked for it or not. Divisiveness brought to the teachers, staff, parents, and greater small community and the associated shame and embarrassment brought on the Snow Glen District only began in earnest when the conservatives on the board started to flex the unsupported and wildly unpopular views on the rest of us. As Paula Jenkins rightly noted, the vast majority of the, uh, the funding for Snow Glen, 80% of it, comes from uh, commuter students from Fremont, Pleasanton, and elsewhere outside Snow If they choose to leave the school because of the intolerance shown by the conservative members of the board, the school will close and we will lose once great school and a point of pride in the community and a place of refuge and support for students from all backgrounds. I'm hopeful that the Snow community will be able to rise up and ultimately overcome this important situation where a governing board has run them up to the detriment of the school students, parents, and greater community. Okay. Any other closing comments? First of all, we have existed as a school district long before this with far fewer children. We didn't pay a superintendent principal three, over $300,000 a year for her job with a package of over $50,000 in benefits. This is the reason we need all these children, because at least one-tenth, more than one-tenth, of every ADA contribution from the students goes to the salary of Mrs. Barnes. Just say. Okay. And with that, we'll adjourn. Thank you. Well, thanks for being here. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you.